I uh, was kind of hoping to start exactly at 7, um, but dinner was late. So let me just take a quick look here and make sure that we've got the um, transcoding options. I'm apparently still hosting Ponce, so let's try and get uh, we'll get the priorities. And uh, we've got another, another first try transcodes. That's good news. Um, so, uh, I'll, I'll jump right into the housekeeping bits, uh, and then hopefully that'll mean that uh, we'll be ready to jump into the game right away. First of all, this has become a regular thing on Mondays, and I apologize for that, because I know, depending on the game that I'm doing, Mondays are the, like, the, the guaranteed day for me to do a strategy game. <clears throat> but, uh... The last few times I've been doing uh, Age of Wonders Planetfall, I've been just very tired. Uh, and I think one of the reasons for that is I've been... Uh, my weekends have been... Oh, there was something new on the launcher. All right, I'll 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 see it for myself on my own time. Um, yeah, I... Uh, my weekends have definitely been very sort of disrupted in terms of the sleep schedule. And that has a really bad habit of kind of creeping into the the weekday and that really translates to um <clears throat> that really translates into some uh like some negative consequences work wise um i i may not really like where i'm working right now but that doesn't mean i you know i don't want to do a good job and so what i've tried to do is be a little bit more disciplined and just making sure that you know the time i spend on streaming the time i spend doing um certain things um <clears throat> you know I, I i don't sacrifice you know kind of the the necessary day-to-day -day stuff but unfortunately uh, i also have to deal with the reality that if i want to keep streaming the best way to do that is to be somewhat consistent in terms of uh, doing broadcast that means not skipping you know the monday wednesday and friday i've given myself that you know one hour window for the start times as a reason <clears throat> and uh, unfortunately kind of those two competing pressures of making sure that I do a full day at work, I do, you know, um, I try and get as much sleep as I can. Um, sometimes those things kind of wind up crashing against each other. <clears throat> and so uh, I, I didn't actually get a full night's sleep last night. Uh, I definitely worked through the day. Um, I might have work from home, but I don't nap. <laughs> uh, and... Um, yeah, I, I'm, I've just I've noticed that I've been feeling a bit groggy the last couple of times that I played this, and it's tough because I know I tend to make very stupid mistakes, which tend to make me do some uh, you know reloads and whatnot. <clears throat> but um, oddly enough, uh, and this lets me sort of spin into a few other topics, um, you know, just to start off with. Again, for those of you who like watching on YouTube, uh, first of all, thank you because I've noticed actually. A number of you have been following. I, I think lately I've been getting more followers, uh, not when I'm live broadcasting, but rather when I'm, uh, you know, when when I'm off cast. And I, I have a feeling that it's because a lot of you are watching on YouTube. Uh, I'm noticing that. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to come up with the best ways for me to uh, to make sure that I can keep both audiences happy because obviously this is a, you know. A multi-hour live broadcast does not necessarily make for the most fun twi uh, uh, YouTube viewing, but I um, I also know my limits in terms of what I can actually accomplish with VODs and how long it takes me to edit stuff because my laptop doesn't really work anymore. Anyways, I was um, reading some stuff kind of about innovation and... Uh, I don't know, just there there've been a few different threads that have been running together about the idea of failure <clears throat> and how very risk averse we've become uh to a certain extent. I mean, I'm considering my own profession here. You know, lots of data analysis has kind of given us the impression that we're almost omniscient. <clears throat> and this can translate into uh a type of planning the example that i i remember reading was um you know you have you're sitting together you have a good idea and then someone goes and, and does a google search and it finds out oh wait no there's this this other group that did did this thing before <clears throat> excuse me and this basically kills the idea because one of two things happened either they patented the idea or uh the idea didn't work <clears throat> and you'll be uh you know, sued if it doesn't work, and you you knew that it uh, it didn't turn out. 
and it's it's an article kind of about um, innovation, starvation. Obviously, that's a <clears throat> excuse me. That's a, a very limited view of it. But I think one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about that um, now is because I do feel self conscious about the reloads. But I do like um, again. I like if I can bumping up the difficulty to something manageable. Um, I tend to play the harder difficulties when I'm off cast. Um, one in the name of progress, but also number two, because um, even if I have a quiet chat, the the disruption of... If you think social media uh, like distracts you and causes your brain to go to mush, imagine that only you're looking at, at chat every couple of seconds. <clears throat> it's no way to form a, an extended train of thought. <coughs> I cannot shake this uh, catch in my throat. Sorry. <clears> throat> Um, but yeah, um, this comes back to a lot of sort of recurring themes here. Uh, it's why I don't like backseating. It's why I, um, I, you know, play some of the games that I do, which is, uh, I like pushing back against the idea that you can only enjoy a game when you're winning. There's a lot of research that goes into games, and I think there is actually a player preference for winning games. Um, you can kind of go back to when I think it was Halo 3 and the Microsoft research team did so much work on studying players as they were playing the game and always making it so that they'd sort of feel the challenge. They feel like they were always on the brink of losing but never actually had the death. Uh, and I think that reveals, I, don't, I do not doubt the, you know, the findings of the research that led them to, um, to make an experience like that. And I also particularly think if you need to appeal to a very broad audience, then yeah, you kind of want to make someone feel super powerful. I think the idea here is that players don't so much want challenge as they want the illusion of challenge. <clears throat> but, you know, it's making a statement like that assumes that there's only one type of player, and clearly there isn't. <clears throat> and uh, in this case here, I think some of the fun is to get beaten by the game to come back and to learn something better. And, you know, maybe you lose to something boneheaded. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's as long as you're kind of going back and trying and learning something new from it. <clears throat> so, um, I don't know if the two are all that related, but I think our, I think there's something to be said for our willingness to accept, you know, the risk, both the possibility of failure as well as the, the rewards of success. Um... <clears throat> In my in my own small way, I, I kind of I kind of like to think that I'm I'm living that through uh, the choices of games that I play and the the way that I play them. Uh, speaking of choices of games, I've got two minutes before the <clears throat> the start thing is finished, or well, you know, the intro is is run out of time. We finished Cloudpunk last week, uh, and then we did some extra hours because I got a very kind uh, host from It Is D Pain. Um, for those of you who were maybe watching last week, uh, Brace Yourself Games gave me a promotional copy of Phantom Brigade, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, I so tremendously enjoyed playing that game. My headphones just got wrapped up. Sorry, one second. There we go. Uh, that game was something else, uh, so I'm really looking forward to getting back to it. I suspect probably what I'm going to be doing is jumping between that and Industries of Titan on my uh, Wednesday and Friday broadcast for the next little while. Um, obviously, Star Kings will be continuing on with the campaign on Mondays for sort of the foreseeable future. Um, as far as what happens after that, I'd like to go back to the main campaign and wrap that up, as well as the parts of Revelations that I didn't complete. Uh, and it may be that there's, um, you know, maybe there's some time to found a new empire. Uh, we'll we'll see how it all goes. <clears throat> but on my off days, uh, I did I do still have my big plan. Um, I've actually got quite a few entries of the, um, you know, the the list of stuff I wanted to finish off. <clears throat> that's um that's actually. I don't think it'll be done by the end of the year. That was never the goal, but I'm definitely knocking a few of those off. And I think that's going to be delayed uh, because I'd really like to do more of that Brace Yourself um, stuff. Uh, I, I really want to get back to Industries of Titan, but particularly Phantom Brigade uh, was just such a, such a perfect fit for me um, that I, I really wanted to, to jump back to it. Hey, Skidlock, good to see you again. Anyways, let me take a minute here and uh, and load up the campaign. We're now at the 10-minute mark. 
So, and I'm just gonna take a minute to tab out, sorry for the lack of audio, but I put the volume a little too high. Uh, oh, I also should mention that there is a new um, there is a new uh, episode of Morrowind. Uh, I seem to be making a pretty decent clip through um, Tribunal, it feels like. Um, definitely lots of things are happening, um, so may maybe I'm just mistaking uh, what's, what's going on. So the next episode of that is, I believe, currently processing on Twitch. If it isn't finished by tonight, um, there may be problems, but I'll, I'll try and deal with that. But yeah, for those of you that like those uh, vodcasts, um, that'll be available to you before too long. And then, um, <clears throat> what else? I don't think there is anything else. So let's um, let's think about where we're at. Uh, so the growth don't like us, um, and that poses a little bit of a challenge, just given the number of, of sort of bases that are in the area. So right now, I'm using my other hero, uh, Rascal the Seer. <clears throat> I'm sort of using that unit to scout out the next um, sort of the next uh, event. Eventually, I do need to get to Black Newt Swamp to do. I believe that is the. Uh, I believe that's the um, sort of the hero quest. And normally, what I would be doing here would be I'd be taking this unit out to kind of try and pursue some more of the objectives. Uh, but of course, the fact of the matter is here that Damster is um, <clears throat> it's sort of beset. Uh, on all sides by uh, by the vicious growth. Uh, in addition, we also have the Hopperhound DNA uh, mission. So in this case, send the destroyer unit you received into combat with Hopperhounds and collect DNA from fallen Hopperhound units by using the destroyer's extract Hopperhound DNA ability. So good news there is, uh, oh, not this one. Uh, this stack has got two Hopperhounds, which in theory I should be able to hoover up their DNA. Um, the one bit of bad news is uh, I am probably going to wind up throwing away one of my units on uh, on this occupation. All right. Despite the Star Union's ban on psionics and the persecution of its practitioners, shrines like this can be found defiantly hidden all over the Star Union's territories. Grants 10 research and 10 energy to the colony it is linked to, and units built in the linked colony gain 2 psionic resistance. I am being a little bit of a, a cheese ball here, because I'm really going to enter in and do the fight. Uh, and if I if it doesn't work out for me, I'm probably just going to wind up resetting it. Um, but it, it again, this is a new faction. I'm actually quite liking the new faction. Um, but uh, part of this is just sort of getting a, getting a feel for where a lot of this stuff is. Uh, how it works and and maybe some different strategies I can employ. So we're certainly on the um, we're certainly on the weaker side of this engagement, but I have a feeling that with manual combat we should be able to make at least some of this uh, turn some of this towards my advantage. Uh, and what I'm going to be doing is um, I'm going to take a quick peek at the units I'm up against because I have a feeling that's going to have some bearing on what. Uh, what kind of strategies I employ. <laughs> okay, so the sort of headline unit seems to be the Tormented. So this guy has Focused Hate. Uh, single action, Psionic bypasses all shields, Broken Mind, 12 Strength to apply, Broken Mind and Turbulence to apply... All right. Echoes of Torment is a repeating, and it's also very high da relative to Focused Hate, it's very high uh, damage. So it's repeating, 22 strength, and also applies Broken Mind and Turbulence. I guess Focused Hate must be like an area of effect, maybe? Otherwise, I'm not sure why you would ever do Focused Hate over uh, Echoes of Torment. Visions of Madness evoke the unit's haunted past. In the mind of an enemy target unit. Uh, this is an 8 strength chance to apply insane to the unit for two turns. If this fails, the unit receives broken mind. Uh, Rory is incoherent, and now uh, now and then he speaks. He witnessed a living nightmare. The other patients corroborate his story. A tentacled creature ripped through their unit. None of their minds survive. They weep uncontrollably. They feel guilt. Shame like they, uh, shame like they made a terrible mistake. He shrieks about his incest, uh, shrieks about its incessant focused hatred. I saw the aftermath of those who didn't survive. I thought no death could be worse. Their minds splattered as though their thoughts were so terrible their heads exploded. Now I see that we were the lucky one. They were the lucky ones. My patients are all tormented. Nurse Rachel Green, RV 1799H, Observations of the Fallen. All right. 
This looks like a hero unit. So, uh, Malektor. But it doesn't seem like it's a hero after all. Uh, the realm of the mind is vast and swirling. With too many senses, a feeling mind is scattered and weak. Those who receive ritual annihilation can only be revived in the single-minded great darkness of malice. I tell you this to strip you down. Other sentiments will destroy you. Only then can you wield the soul-seeking darkness and unlock the lure of darkness. Only when you are dedicated by un unadulterated odium uh, will the darkness bind your enemies with cords of despair. Myrtle Fane, RV43092R, Sinumbra Ritual of the Malactor. So Soul Seeker, repeating, nine strength, deals, broken mind, and so, okay, that's not too bad. Uh, cage of Suffering, lock the target unit in a cage of their own discord. The unit is unable to move or act, takes damage at the end of its turn, and becomes filled with despair. Okay. Dark Locust, attempt to uh, curse target unit with insects made of psionic energy, uh, causing damage over time. With the, uh, if the target dies while affected, the insects burst, dealing damage and spreading filled with despair. Okay, so both of these are full action, um, full action moves. So ideally what I want to do is try and stagger this guy, but he does have a status effect resistance. So it's definitely going to be a, um, this is definitely going to be a fairly tough one to... Um, to try and uh, and push um, uh, push around. Initiate. It's been my observation that because a true lasting happiness requires difficult sacrifices, many societies give up on it altogether. The Sinumbra have clearly decided not only to avoid happiness, but to fight anyone who tries to find it. No matter their race, Sinumbra initiates stoke hatred and malevolence. Cold and dark initiates can rob victims of hope. They employ a psionic attack called a Soul Spear, which breaks the mind of an adversary. I try to avoid them. My friends already think I'm insane. Uh, I'm insane as I am. Mareg Nib, RV22299X, Forlorn Fantasy Destinations. So Soul Claw, this is a melee uh, attack. There's Devour Hope, single action, attempt to feed on the hope of a target enemy unit, causing it to enter a state of despair. If it's successful, the caster heals for 20 health. Uh, and then, of course, our familiar Frenzy. We are the Frenzy, branded as worker tools, our claws thirst for reaping. We work with our mindless mother. We are not them. We work until our van uh, vanished queen returns. She calls from the empty. They think she died. The Earth's fertile wealth will feed our broken. We are strongest in the true swarm. We will follow our forgotten purpose. We fight those who exiled our queen. Too long we worked for them. Now we fight. They desire sweet nectar. We'll give them bile. We are the Frenzied. Message repeats. Kirko Interrogator Translator Unit. Translation errors. RV1457D. The Carapace Broken. With their Rending Claws and Battle Vomit. Okay. Do I have a heal? I can't remember. I do, uh, but with the Embolden. So I'm going to want to hold on to that for a bit. So who... Okay. No armor. Quite a bit of... Sh okay, these guys... The burning banner sure is tempting. The question is, what's my exit strategy after dropping it? I think... Uh, it's a, See, this is the really tough one for me. Is It's hard for me to decide whether or not I want them to come to me. Or if I... Um, So, for instance, I'd really love to sort of work around and, and slap these guys around with my uh, my other units. Okay, well, honestly, the best I can hope for right now is just to protect for the... Um, for the next turn, so I'll do whatever chip damage I can. <clears throat> Let's see how the next turn turns out. So this guy might have just blocked everything in the uh, on the path.
Operations available. Okay. Ouch. So this was an appealing attack because it keeps me behind cover. Um, this guy, I'm going to get the repeating attack on the Kirko with the Entropic Shock. And conveniently, now I get my chance to embolden. So I'm not entirely convinced I'm going to be able to put this thing to bed, but... So I can set these guys on fire, but they do also get the bonus, like, so they can also heal off of uh, attacking me. So the question is, do I think I, do I want to try and do an attack on uh, this unit by moving myself around? Or do I want to try and get an early attack on these guys? So I don't think I have any attacks that keeps me out of range, uh, which means I think I'll go for a second best and sort of take them at, uh, <clears throat> take them at my own pace. Enemy destroyed. And if I need, I have a cleansing light. I can. Uh, I guess I only have one of them. Okay, so now I gotta remember about the fact that these things link. <laughs> So again, this is challenging for this unit, but I get an... Oh, hang on. He's going to be out for another unit. Damn. Yeah, this might get a little complicated. <laughs> a brave sacrifice. Yeah, we're not going for that. All right, I'm going to try... Um, I'm going to try the combat again, but it's likely I'm going to have to just leave this for... Uh, it's likely I'm just going to have to leave this for a time when I'm better equipped. The psionics are a little too destabilizing on my side. So, the first approach was to try and close the gap as quickly as possible. The next one that I'm going to attempt here is to get them to commit on a side and then just sort of wear them down uh, so that in the end they're only left with their sort of powerful psionic units. Um... Actually, that's not entirely true. Uh, one thing I am going to do is uh, move my folks into, I'll say, tempting positions, maybe, is the, the way I want to put it. curious what they do. I'm assuming they're still going to tr try and put insanity on one of my units, but yeah. That was on my hero, too. So they're going to get gooped. So as far as the placement is concerned, this isn't 
all that bad. Unfortunately, having my hero being able to smack my archer three times. Yeah. You know what? I think I'm just gonna say we're not we're not equipped for this <laughs> this fight. There might be other ways to work around it, but um, that insanity is just a little too much for uh, the units that I have. So what I'll do instead is we'll get a little bit closer to get a little bit closer to the uh, growth. So my preference, of course, would be to take this stack. Um, we don't quite have the range for it anyway, but I, it's nice to be able to get the um, the heal in anyway. Whoa! That's a creative interpretation of the order. Um, uh, allow them to retreat. Aha! Uh -huh. I'm debating as to whether or not I want to try and get them over the river. I don't think I can afford to do that because if they get caught out, then they're one against however many. Townsend Folly has an unexploited sector. That's Vine Grove. So um, eventually this will be an industrial center and I might as well start with the production. Exploitation. Now, of course, the question is, do where in the queue do I want to put that? I think I will actually put it in the... Um, oh, come on. I think I'm going to put that after the... Actually, you know what? I'm going to put it at the top of the stack because it's going to improve all of the production for everyone else. And it's clear that I'm not really going to be able to use this army right away anyway. All right. Same story here. Um, so if it's agricultural exploitation, I get the bonus. This I will automatically get as soon as I do finally clear it out. But that's going to be a while still. So again, most sense would be to make an agriculture colony... Um, Let's also say, yeah, we'll do infrastructure for now. I might change this around a bit. All right, this is uh, now unofficially my scout unit. Okay, so there's actually not that much going on here. Um, which I suppose makes me feel okay. Sector annexed. Sector annexed. And then Doctor Doctrine Ern enacted. Ah, excellent. Okay, so this might actually so this probably wouldn't still save me from the uh this wouldn't save me from the um wouldn't save me from the psionics, but this is gonna be helpful when I go after the big uh, growth city. So not that exciting of a turn, um, but we are gonna be able to start building some defenses. This is going to be a fairly important one. All right. Now, I, I am always curious if I do the auto combat, what does the AI do? Interesting. Uh, it does not indicate, however, that we have um, that we've actually achieved the mission. Uh, so I'm still going to retry um, just because I'd like to know. Now, the destroyer unit is not quite as fragile as the pustule, so I'm able to have them be a bit more active in the combat. One of the ones I'm worried about are these worker bees. Um, they're actually not a, necessarily that bad of a combat unit on their own, but it's really their ability to heal that uh, gives me pause. Um, and honestly, there isn't really anything in the way of area of effect, so I think at this point here... What I really want to do is just make sure that I've got my... Essentially, I just want to build my my um, encounter the way that I've sort of built all of them. Um, make sure that my guardians are at the front, putting up the shields. Everybody else is kind of following behind, and uh, tr I'm trying to make it as costly as I can to, uh, to mess around with my guys. Uh, this guy's... Nope, I think they might be in the... No, you know what? I don't think they're in that cover. I should have thought that through. Now, this guy's a little bit of a harder case. Um, well, no, you know what? Let's push him ahead. If I can, if nothing else, if I can tease out that heal from one of the worker bees, 
Um, it just denies them from something else. Nope, that didn't work. And I don't think I'm able to do anything with my archer, but let's uh, let's not rule out possibilities. So this is, of course, the ideal target for the fire. Um, I think in this case, though, I'm going to let them have the option in terms of how they want to engage. Uh, and this is a little bit of a cowardly use for the hungry Blaine, but I'm going to keep uh, I'm going to keep that back just because I need to make sure that it's eating hopper hounds when the time comes. That is not the unit you want to have going into a fire overwatch. Although I guess that one will heal. I am curious who they jump. Okay. What? They get to go all the way back? That's nonsense. Operations available. Okay, so I'm able to take out the healer. I might as well. So I believe that has eliminated all of their... I believe that's eliminated all of their healing capacity. I only get one hit with the pike. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the strongest unit and move them up front. And then we're going to get their companions to hit the Void Blast afterwards. And looks like we can finish these guys off with an Entropic Shock. So this is good news. I still need to get the Hopper Hound in to eat these guys up. But it gives me a start. Um, now, I guess the real question is, who do I want to... You know what, I think I'll just take the Burning Great Bow and... So, bit of a question. Um, I could... So I could ignore this guy and get hit by the Overwatch. Um, or I could... Hmm. Yeah, none of this is going to be a killing blow. Um... Yeah. The hero is doing what heroes should be doing. I, I don't feel too bad about that. Um, and I'll get the Hopper Hound to come in and finish the job. Enemy destroyed. So I gotta get uh, the hopper. I gotta eat the hopper hound. This guy's probably gonna get the flank on the the de uh, destroyer, but that's not necessarily the end of the world. Obviously, they're gonna get a hit on the back. Actually, you know what? I might lose my hero this turn because it's a flank. There is a sp again. There is a specific plan behind this. Yeah, I I wasn't thinking. But not forgotten. I definitely can't afford to do that. Uh, I don't know what happens if I lose the... I don't... I, I really don't remember... Or, sorry, I don't remember. I don't know what happens if I lose the destroyer unit, so... I am clearly not with it tonight if I'm losing... Uh, losing two tactical battles right off the bat. I guess three, because I reloaded the previous one. So there will still be similar ideas to the last time, but I'm going to tighten up a couple of decisions that I made. Uh, one is going to be um, limiting the movement of this unit. Basically just making sure that I can get this guy in for security. The rest of it's going to be very similar, um, but I may... I think I'm going to be a little more reluctant to throw the destroyer. So, you know, obviously I overestimated how much more durable the... Um, the destroyer was. The rest of this, though, is going to be exactly the same as, as before.
I got pretty lucky there. <laughs> That's so weird to me that they basically just get to walk across the the battlefield again after Operations failing um, huh. failing the hit. Now, let's see if there's an elegant way to... Okay, I hope this works. Okay, good Enemy news. Down. Enemy killed. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a risk. Actually, this isn't as bad as I thought it would be. So they still get flanked, but they're not as aggressively attacked by, uh, from all sides. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what gave that guy a sudden sense of haste, but I'm glad he's got it. Um, so now I really just need to be thinking about threats to the the hopper hound. I think in this case we'll we'll do what we can to the to the worker bees. Although I don't think we're going to be able to properly take them out. Well, maybe if I get a lucky crit, but. I think all my luck came from other <laughs> other parts in this map, so. Okay, so they did go after the Hopper Hound, but we get two overwatches, I think. Enemy annihilated. I gotta make sure that the Hopper Hound is not the last thing standing, otherwise I'm not gonna be able to eat it. That's really interesting, it chose to kill itself rather than... Oh wait, no, because it's got the life drain, I forgot about that. It's funny, most of the time I, I think that the computer's made a mistake, but it's actually just a much better... It, it's essentially just demonstrating it has a much better understanding of its own mechanics. Um, so this is actually a fairly... This is a fairly clever move on its part, because it's locked down my archer as well as my... Um, my paladin aspirants, but... I should still be able to make... Uh, make this work. Enemy down. So of course now I'm able to get the second uh Opera Hound. Enemy destroyed. <laughs> Excuse me. Alright, so that's obviously a much better um a much more effective round. I, I did have a little bit of luck for the um with the way things turned out, but there are a couple of details I want to handle here. Oh, God, not that. Oh, Jesus, that's so bad. Um, I'm just going to take my lumps and move back like that. I really thought that was this unit. So what I wanted to do here was drop and embolden. In this case, I just want to get him in the shielded area, so... I might have been able to... to finish this off. Um, but I think at this point here, I'm, I'm waiting to see how bad the... the retaliation is. Eh, yeah, not so bad. So, we'll do another embolden. And now this is just a matter of wrapping wrapping things up. I think I get a parasitic infection, or potential for parasitic infection, if I uh, use my destroyer. And it's a full... Okay. Our forces are victorious. So we did have one uh, parasitic infection that landed, so we may wind up with the Xenoblade unit. Nope, but we did complete the, we did complete the mission. Great work, Aluna Lin uh, Linus. Uh, the research unit is adapting well to the new DNA it absorbs. Don't be alarmed about the extra legs and it, uh, and it now being a towering monstrosity. <laughs> Director Anessa, this research thing uh, you have me traipsing around is calling itself a plague lord. This is the most unscientific science I have ever seen. 
Unconventional problems require unconventional methods. We are almost there. The last target species is the uh, Mycelians. Their DNA will strengthen our immune systems and let us adapt to the environment uh, with its ever-changing hazards. All Objective right. completed. Send the Plague Lord unit you received into combat with the uh, Mycelians to collect the, uh, and collect the DNA of a fallen Mycelian unit using the Plague, Plague Lord's Extract Mycelian uh, DNA ability. Um, so we will collect two units and we wait. Now this is actually going to be harder uh, for the simple reason that I don't necessarily want to be attacking those units. Uh, they're in a position of strength right now. So... Um, but it is a decent decent enough unit for me to be able to clear out the the remaining growth. Um, huh. Actually, as it is, we can also probably clear out some of the Dvar. Um, Our colonies require the means to protect themselves and a reason to stay. At the very least, it's time to invest in some good old-fashioned guns and beer. Dollar Smith, Deneb Colony Mayor. So standard military infrastructure is a pretty pretty important one for me. I did delay getting it uh, because I wasn't quite I wasn't quite clear on exactly what the challenges of this map would be. But given the fact that the growth starts off as very hostile, I sort of have to I have to adapt. Uh, and you know, without some kind of military infrastructure, I'm not going to be able to take my my better armies out to complete the objectives. So, um, aquatic deployment is mildly tempting just because of the river crossing penalties I've been getting. Uh, then, of course, there's production development and food development because of the uh, the um, the exploitations I've got for my sectors. Um, it's a one turn difference. I'm going to do aquatic deployment for the simple reason that my uh, my production is actually tied up for both um, for both colonies for a while. Okay. Um, I may regret doing this, but oh Jesus, that's a lot of a lot of strong guys. <laughs> This guy's four turns away. So basically, I just didn't want to have this thing camping on the, the objective and not really accomplishing anything. All right, this guy's just going to sit in the base. I don't feel so bad about not building any military infrastructure in Townsend Folly, but uh, Damister definitely needs a military infrastructure, and they're going to get that pretty much right away. I'm also going to adjust the order a bit, so we'll do food. And you know what? I think I'm going to give him... Nah, I don't actually quite have the need for the throne yet, but I might move the throne up. Um, Empire task completed. So I do want to go after this growth unit for the simple fact that it's sitting on Cosmite. So even if I wind up um, uh, at peace with them, uh, the simple fact that I'm able to get this precious resource is uh, a pretty big deal for me. And it looks like there is a domain invasion I should be a bit worried about. So, um, oh, hello. We might be able to fulfill the objective after all. The good news is that most of these are actually pretty weak units. I don't have a whole lot to fear from the bees. Um, this will actually be an opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about the flowering node. They do have the risk that they take control of my units, but other than that, it's not uh, it's not the end of the world. 
And while I am putting my archer unit in danger, um, these things are, I believe, weak to fire. Though maybe not when they're grazing. <laughs> um, looks like I am able to get away with a so we'll set up protection. It's actually mildly tempting just to do a, a straight up wall. Um, I think in this case, though, I will uh, I'll split them up. Again, there is the worry about the mind control. But... like I do get a chance to poke at this guy one more time. Okay, let's see what the Plague Lord can do. So we've got the Serrated Spikes with Parasitic Infection. We've got the Super Infection. Ah, it's once per battle. Uh, reanimation Spores, Reanimate a Friendly Dead Xenoplague Unit, which I don't think I have. Um, plague Pods are from the Ability and Lacerating Tentacles. I think it's just because just a chance to have a melee attack. Anyways, looks like I do get an opportunity to chip away at this guy one more time, so... All right, let's see what the counterattack looks like. Again, the opportunity here is really just to see how these flowering nodes um, uh, either work or kind of how they, they handle what I've thrown at them. Oh, that's right, the fungal infection destabilizes people. I should have read the abilities. I think I can still survive this, but this is going to be a lot tougher now. Operations ready. That sucks. All right, we'll give him the vault, vault pistol. Enemy eliminated. So it looks like this unit can move. Um, This is going to mean the destroyed. Plague Lord gets to uh, eat that up. Now I suppose the question is, do I want to give somebody precognition, or do I want to try and go on the offensive with some of my units? Um, there is an argument, I think, to do the Entropic Shock on the worker. Alright, so it looks like only one of them got hit by the, the Spore in the end. Um, well, with that in mind, uh, let's try and find some cover for this guy. Hmm. Well, look, the chances aren't great, but it can potentially take it out, so... If I have to, I'll Cleansing Light the hero, but we'll see what the next turn brings. Okay, again, that wasn't a control. huge that wasn't a huge surprise, but what I'm going to do is use this... Unit uh, under enemy control. Ooh, I wasn't expecting to do it on two. Um, the idea here is to take this unit to wipe out this flowering node. Down. 
I think I'm gonna have to rebuild that damn <laughs> suit of armor. I can't believe I have to do this on every single battle. Hey, how you doing, Band of Goblins? I'm sucking at Planetfall tonight, but that's fine. I'm, I'm finding, like, well, I, the nice way of putting it is finding my feet. How are you doing tonight? Okay, so I knew the mind control was coming. That, was, that wasn't that was necessarily all that bad. I'm just trying to think about where I let things fall apart. And I think it was just the fact I didn't respect the, uh, the effects of the, the fungal infection. So I actually need to keep... It's it's counterintuitive because this army is actually so good all, uh, all combined, uh, combined like that. But uh, in this case, I actually want to hold back. So first things first, let's try and get whatever chip damage we can on uh, our spore friend. So then... Priority number two. So basically, the thing I'm worried about here is if they do, um, is it hard? Yeah, hardened sapling cannon. So basically, I want to avoid people in AOEs like this, uh, even if that means giving up what seems like a really good opportunity for attack. Um, the name of the game is a little bit more. Um, you know, stop stop them from being able to destabilize my units. In fact, I'm also willing to potentially risk the um, the effects of a. Uh, uh, I'm I'm willing to risk the effects of like a, a mind control. Okay, I can live with this. I think. Technically, I don't need to be quite as fearful on this side of the map. Um, although it does still have the movement. Oh no, hang on, that's a full... Yeah, that's a full action. So, as long as I... You know what, it's just not worth... It's just not worth giving them the opportunity. So... Yeah. The worst they can do is destabilize one of my units before we're able to close in, and it has a two-turn cooldown, so that thing should be dead by the time. Just listening while you work on some other things? Glad I can be of service. Do um, you mind if I ask what other things you're working on? Obviously, you don't need to answer that, but I am always curious. Alright, now this might break the AoE, but I... At least whenever I do uh, attacks like that, it has to choose between air or ground, not both. Alright. Oh, neat! I'm sure it's not a secret to anyone that I've been, um, interesting, so he didn't go for the AoE attack. Um, I don't think it's a secret that I, uh, I wound up getting the, um, the Cyberpunk, um, bundle through Humble, and, uh, I've, I've kind of been in a, an RPG-ish mode more. Is this thing really gonna die? I guess that's the risk if I move him up ahead like that. Yeah, that's not working. <laughs> Alright, this is a lot harder than I thought it would be. I remember starting off saying that this thing was going to be a cakewalk because those individual units aren't all that strong, but it shows what I know. I guess, yeah, so the big... I'm noticing a trend in the each of these times that I need to reset these battles. Um... I assume th this is like when you do policy analysis. Like you, you take the world as it is um, for granted, and then you get surprised when you change the rules of something and people behave differently. Um, so I only have myself to blame on this, really. 
So I suppose the new question with this one is how much is it really worth to me to be able to get that shot on the on the planter? Not much in my opinion. Um, I'll move them up, um, but like as an AOE, or maybe I can put the banner down. Banner gives me a start. So again, want to make sure I don't get affected by any AOE stuff. Um, hopefully it also gives them a slightly more attractive target to point at. I don't get the uh, armor bonus anymore, but I want to try and be a little more aggressive. Okay, so again, the question is placement that doesn't result in an AoE. Congrats on getting Cyberpunk. I really hope it meets your expectations. Well, I mean, I, I have to recognize that I think the book that... Um, I think the book that they uh, that's included in the bundle is from the 90s. So, you know, I, I kind of have to accept that it's going to reflect probably some very old-fashioned uh, old fashioned ways of doing things. Um, but the thing is, is that I also don't have that much role-playing experience. Um, so part of it is to, you know, just kind of look at the source material. I really like... So one of the things I look for the most on um, when it comes to sort of source books and core books for, um, for cyberpunk stuff is actually the reading lists. Uh, I was very disappointed. There's a, um, a cyberpunk RPG called Ex Machina. And in the book, it, it actually claims that it's got a whole bibliography. And nowhere in the book does it actually have the bibli bibliography. It was either, you know, taken out during an edit or it was never produced. Um, but, like, I actually wound up buying that book specifically because when I was, like, you know, kind of flipping through the introduction... Uh, it mentioned, you know, yeah, there's a reading list inside of it, and I'm like, oh, okay, this will, this will, this looks, you know, in line with what I wanted. Um, and yeah, I, I should have. I mean, I try not to like read the thing cover to cover in the store, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've had it for years, so it's not a not a big deal. But yeah, I I don't have um, I don't have overwhelming expectations, and I I have no idea if I'll ever actually wind up playing it. But it's. Um, I don't know, it's just one of these things I, you know, I, I thought the price was right for, you know, what I was paying for it. It was a chance for me to support a, a broadcaster who I like because they had their own humble link. I'm just like, I have mine. Uh, you're not allowed to use your own humble link if you were curious, so I can't can't buy <laughs> by using my own. Um, and yeah, uh, I'd like to run it um, or play in it, but we'll we'll see. Let's see how badly my commander suffers for the for taking point without protection. All right. Well, we knew that the fungal infestation was was going to be a thing. So this is actually one case where cleansing light, I think, makes a lot of sense. It'll heal them. It'll also remove all the debuffs, and that gives them a chance to just come in and. Uh, and take their revenge. I'm feeling slightly better about this start. We'll see where it goes, but... Operations ready. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, just because I don't want to dedicate any other healing... Um, now, let's see what my archer can get away with. Let's see what happens after I fling the spikes at this guy. Good. Enemy eliminated. I don't quite believe that they can't reach the target. Oh, I guess it means they have to be like on the same. They have to be on the same spot. That's probably what that means. Okay, so now the question is, what's the best use for my archer here? I don't have the threat of the um, the AOE anymore. Huh. 
So, of course, this is my hero still taking point. Um, there is a worry here that there's still a lot of guys who are going to be piling on them. But I can slightly tip things to my favor with the precognition. Uh, sure, Band of Goblins. The only only condition on game suggestions is I um, I have no idea when I'm ever going to be able to get to anything that I've um, that people have recommended. So uh, the the condition basically is as long as as long as we all understand each other as far as um, as far as my uh, kind of my bandwidth in terms of being able to to get those recommendations played. I'm, I always find it really helpful to get an idea about what uh, Enemy either destroyed. what people would like to see me play or what uh, you know what they think might be in my my interests. So this is probably going to be mind control turn. Unit yep. under enemy control. Ooh, that's a tough one. Okay. So I'm gonna, I wonder if I can, if I have a way of doing a stagger, I wanna take it. Unfortunately, that doesn't do the job. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is extract the DNA called Per Aspera. I've not heard of that one. Would you be able to... Uh, this is a single-player game. This is the campaign for Star Kings, and I'm, I'm already struggling with that, so I think it's uh, it's just as well that I'm not trying to to go uh, to go any further. How are you doing, um, uh, Javi the Beat? Uh, but yeah, uh, Band of Goblins, would you mind unpacking what's, uh, what's in Per Aspera and what, what gives that... Um, what, what gives that the hallowed space of a recommendation? Try and get a little in, uh, a little closer before I go. Right. Enemy destroyed. So I don't think this thing sta- Oh, it does stagger. Okay. So I want to try and get in as close as I can. And if I'm able to... Hey, thank you very much for the follow. I really thought the stagger would break the link. So what I'm curious about, if I cleansing light this unit does that actually remove the okay i'm actually just i, I want to find out how this works myself so based on what i know um mind control i mean it's like allergic reaction at least in terms of the category so i feel like it should be removing the negative effect yes it does okay cool so obviously this guy's in a little bit of a tight spot, but I can always uh, I can always remove him. Um, alternatively, I could try and do an embolden for the 15 heal. I gotta be kind of careful because this guy's got a mind control uh, of the pheromone spray available as well. So at least one unit's gonna get. Uh, mind controlled. I'll try and bait them out with uh, with this one. Oh, that was reckless. What was I thinking? Um... I'm probably going to lose that unit, but that's, I, I can just reload the save. Um, so this one's probably going to mind control. This one's going to be the one that attacks. Uh, and actually, there's one small saving grace, which is I can do the heroism for the extra heal. It's a Mars Terraformer game where you play as an AI in charge of the process and different situations arise. Oh, interesting. 
Yeah, I actually I loved surviving Mars. So it's uh, that's that's a rather uh, that's a rather good recommendation. Unit under enemy control. I was not expecting that one to get the uh, the mind control. Okay, just survived. Unit lost. Whoa. Okay, no burning banner. Okay. Um, so I might actually be able to wrap up this turn. So I want to make sure that I eat the. Eat the dead first. So let's see if I can clear out this unit first. Oh, really? Okay. Again, I'm going to try and clear out this guy. Now, the nice one thing that would be nice to try would be to get another heal on, on this guy. Um, there's an outside chance I'm going to be able to do it with... Yeah, I'm not 100% sure this is going to... This is kind of clowny, but... If, if I can pull it off, I want to try, so... I'm not going to use cleansing... Oh, I can't afford to do cleansing light anyway. Uh, okay, so the thing, the risk that I have here, of course, is that I, I don't do enough damage to be able to put this thing to bed, so... No one ever expects the mind control. How you doing, Mad King Brutus? Uh, Jeffy the Beat, what is this game about? So Age of Wonders Planetfall in general, or this um, this particular campaign that I'm doing? Uh, Age of Wonders Planetfall is... Um, it's a sort of a follow-up to a fantasy series uh, called Age of Wonders. Um, it's kind of... It's a science fiction for... Uh, the, the simplest description I could give would be it's a science fiction uh, 4X game. So if you think of games like uh, Civilization or Endless Space or en Endless Our Legend, are uh, you have that sort of idea of you're on a big strategic map, you're moving your units around, and you're trying to advance the interests of your uh, either your nation or your race or... Um, you know, in this case, it's a it's a species it's a species and a, a technology combination. What makes this unique? Um, there's two things. Well, okay, it, it's not just two things that make it unique. Um, one way of looking at this game would be to say it's kind of like an inverted XCOM. And what I mean by that is to say, uh, XCOM is when you think of XCOM, you think of that turn-based tactical game, you know, moving your units around and getting flanks on the aliens and, and just generally the the shooting game. And there is the strategic layer, which will inform what happens at the tactical layer, but it's the tactical layer that's sort of driving the bus. In the case of Agent Wonder's Planetfall, it's probably one of the more developed uh, combat systems. So if you play a game like Civilization or Endless Legend, you also have a strategic map like this, but um, and Landis Legend sort of gives you individual unit control, but like it's a it's a little more abstracted. Um, in the case of Age of Wonders Planetfall, it really you just saw what the combat looks like. It's a hex based, uh, turn based tactical uh, sort of mini game, um, but I would say sort of the main driver of this game is the strategic layer. Uh, what made the Age of Wonders series unique? Maybe not unique. I mean, there's there's other games that have done this. Like Heroes of Might and Magic is is an example of a game like it. But uh, you um, you basically control a hero. Uh, so the thing that made the fantasy Age of Wonders game so appealing is that you sort of think of your favorite fantasy books or movies. And you have these larger-than-life heroes with tremendous abilities. And, I mean, this goes right back to the Iliad, right? You've got, you know, Achilles and Odysseus and Ajax. Uh, you know, just these people who are, are quite literally sons and daughters of gods. I guess more sons of gods. Um, and they are, are doing just these incredible feats. Um, and, you know, ever since then, we've been telling those kinds of stories. And you have these heroes that, that appear in the pages and just run in and, and perform these absolutely preposterous um, feats of heroism. So, in the case of... Hey, thank you very much for the bit, Nick. 4,359th of their name. Um, so, in the case of the fantasy games, you would have a race and you would have a class. So, you know, you could be a warlord or a cleric or a druid or something like that. And then you'd also have the ability to cast spells. 
In the case of Age of Wonders Planetfall, uh, it takes place in a science fiction world after the collapse of this great star empire, which uh, sort of, it was composed of a number of different uh, species and different factions. And you start off as a member of the Vanguard who are sort of these groups. If, I don't know how much science fiction you read, but sort of the idea of sort of these like generation ships where, you know, you'll, you'll, go, you'll head out and it's not exactly generation ships because like everybody's in cryosleep, but the idea is that these things aren't necessarily traveling faster than light. They're going out into space, but hundreds of years are passing by and you, you know, you wake up and this is a particularly appealing to the kind of people who maybe don't have anything left for them back home. So they'll, you know, they'll wait for, um, for a new life in the colonies. And uh, you arrive on what's supposed to be your colonizing planet and find out that the Empire is not there anymore. And effectively in this game, you are, um, you're sort of fighting over the scraps of that Empire. Um, what's unique about Planetfall is that their campaign, like they actually are bothering to make it a unique experience. So there's lots of twists and turns in terms of the story. You, you go through a whole bunch of different species. Um, but I would say at its heart, this game is a, is a 4X style strategy game with a very well-developed combat layer. And a lot of the other systems are sort of maybe abstracted away a little bit. You spend a bit less time obsessing over what uh, resources a given hex is going to give you. Uh, and instead, you put your attention a little bit more towards how you're going to wind up clobbering those guys who have that stuff that you want. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the game is like. Um, I will actually tell you what, guys. I'm sorry to do this, um, but this trailer is just too good. Uh, if my description was boring, I'll also show you the E3 trailer for this game, which is probably one of my favorite trailers ever. <laughs> um, and uh, I think it does a very nice job of showing kind of what's going on in my head while I play, if not in my words. Peggy 16. Peggy 16. It's like my favorite trailer ever. Um, this is actually maybe not a bad time for me to mention because I should have done this off the top of the off the top of the the game. Um, I was given a copy of this game for promotional purposes from Paradox or Triumph, uh, as well as the um, Revelations the and, and to survive Whoa and profit. Being stranded on a barely habitable planet when the star. My bad. Um. Yeah, uh, I should have mentioned that I was given promotional copy of the game, uh, both the base game and the two DLC Invasions and Revelations. And I think when they gave me Invasions, uh, they gave me a season pass. So technically, I didn't request this, um, and I, I actually don't think they're really giving me press keys for stuff anymore. Paradox isn't really giving me press keys for stuff anymore, but I guess this is a holdover from a, a happier time. So um, yeah, uh, obviously, if I'm going to talk about how awesome this game is, you should probably know that uh, I was given to it from the develop. Take it back. Your description was significantly better than the trailer. Really? <laughs> I like the trailer a lot. I figure if you give, uh, if you give um, Dinosaurs with Laser Beams its own like title card, you're, you're doing well. Anyways, um, what I'll do is hopefully in the, um, you know, in the, in the entrance of, you guys didn't like that trailer? That's madness. All right. Um, 
I'm going to, uh, what I'll do here is I'll try and explain some of the concepts about why I think this game is interesting while I, uh, while I, I play the game. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to bring them up inside of, uh, inside of chat. So, uh, my paladins are getting increasingly uneasy being around this lumbering genetic horror. I believe you can be trusted, uh, you can be trusted with it, Director Inessa. Just take it away. Thank you for overseeing this research, Aluna of the Oathbound. We sit, won't forget your help here. I need only a small tissue sample, so you can keep Mr. Slimy, as it, it seems to have grown accustomed to your genetic scent anyway. Mr. Slimy? I won't even ask. Well, the Oathbound honor all fellow combatants, even those as unconventional as Mr. Slimy. Good. But now I have to prepare my body for the DNA injection. After what happened the last time, I cannot account for using any anybody else as a testing subject. If all goes well, we will meet again as equals, breathing the same fresh air. Alright, so we got Cosmite, uh, Growth Faction War. War is broken out with the Growth. Uh, they have many enemies on this planet who would reward us for their annihilation. Or perhaps we can find something of value amongst their dead. We have handed over samples of defeated Growth to our research department. So this is because we killed 10 Growth units. We just got a whole bunch of science out of that, which is always good news. Now, the main reason why I was attacking the Growth was so that I can sort of clear out the threats to the colony. That's more or less happened now. Maybe this one's threatening, uh, dam threatening Damister, and I mean, we have no idea whether or not this is going to be spawning anything, uh, anything too drastic. But uh, yeah, because you just bought it, you was being ignorant before uh, I bought it, so my info was helpful. Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah, I, I like this game a lot, um, Javi. If, if you don't mind, I'll just call you Javi. Um, but uh, if you'd prefer to be called something else, just let me know. Uh, but I tend to stumble over people's names, so the the fewer opportunities I have to screw up, the better. All right, this is actually going to suck quite a bit. I don't think my I don't think my garrisons on their own are enough to hold this back. Um, they are not able to threaten the capital, so let's move my. It's one unit. I don't actually... I don't have a lot of hope for him surviving that, but... Who would win? Incredible, super powerful space armies or some fungi... <laughs> How you doing, Night Valian? Um, we actually just uh, killed and eat, uh, ate some of them. Oh, damn it. Um, I even tried to avoid the night bot. You're on cooldown, Night Valian. Sorry. All right, uh, Knight Valian is a Brazilian streamer who is always shouted out in the same breath as Nightbot due to the similarity of the names. <laughs> um, he, uh, I, I originally found him playing Lucifer Within Us from Kit Fox Games, um, but uh, I've since had the pleasure of watching everything from Outer Wilds to a ton of Hitman. You moved on to something that wasn't Hitman, but I don't remember what it was. Um, anyways, an incredibly friendly and very relaxed streamer. So if you're looking for something, particularly if you keep coming in and wondering why I'm shutting off the stream, he streams a bit later than I do. And just a nice, nice very relaxing environment. Uh, I, I, I'm very fond of catching his stuff when I get a chance to. Um, so also, he's been a very dedicated viewer of my stuff, which gives me an even better reason to recommend him. Okay, um... Sorry, I was going to say something about the game. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm moving this unit up to try and preempt the, an attack from these folks. If they come after Townsend Folly, then I just kind of move my unit back. Um, it does look like they'll kind of be blocking the way, but... Um, and I might want to try and take out the growth here. Um, but overall, I think we're looking a bit better as far as... Uh, as far as sort of defending uh, Damister. And then in three turns, when the um, sort of our uh, slurry or whatever it is, it's the, what is it called? The Sweet Grain Mush. In three turns when that's done, I'll be able to, to sort of dump it off in the, in the location. Again, just taking a quick minute here to see what resources are available. Uh, I will pick up these these free resources over here, but I kind of want to make sure that I have a full turn to sort of go pick them up and then run back. Again, if these guys wind up spawning something hostile, I don't want to... I don't want the possibility of getting clobbered. Um, 
And the hope is that I'm going to be able to take this unit and go to Black Newt Swamp to complete the next task. Uh, it might even make some sense actually just to have them running through, depending on what happens with these sort of marauder units, I might even move the this unit up to clear them out. Um, although that does mean I'm not able to do anything about the growth in that region. The sea is a maiden of many moods, most of them murderous. Captain Peter Visser, Salty Bay Colony. So the main reason we got this, of course, was the river crossing expertise, so that it's a little bit easier for me to cross over um, certain tiles. And I think production is a higher pri- I do want my colonies to grow, and I would prefer them to grow rapidly, but I think production is a higher priority just so I can get those armies up and running. So we'll do production development, um, it's also going to take me a while to actually get all the infrastructure built. And it looks like we're ready to upgrade uh, Aluna Leoness. So, we've got attenuators while in a vehicle gain one level of stagger resistance and plus one stater, status effect resistance. That's kind of tempting. It would be nice if I could actually figure out what's going on with the, uh, with the colony lord. Revealing soul is also a very tempting... Um, All right, so I got to think about this. Um, I'm going to hold back on agrarian. So agrarian ideals would probably be the closest alignment to actual knights and the feudal system. Uh, energetic efficiency, there's a good argument here uh, because it will allow me to field larger arm armies. Do I have a streaming schedule? I do, uh, Javi. So normally it's Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, I give myself an hour window for the start time just to allow for you know things like work or a later dinner or that. So I'll start anywhere from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on... Uh, that's Eastern time. So I've been streaming for... About an hour and 20... Well, I guess Twitch will tell you. I've been streaming for about an hour and 20 minutes. So I got a slightly later start uh, today. Um, but basically, um, anywhere from 7 to 8 is my, my usual start time on a, uh, on a standard day. Uh, so Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays are on the... Um, on the... Uh, like my usual live broadcasts. Uh, on uh, Mondays are sort of dead. They used to be dedicated to Paradox Grand Strategy games. Um, unfortunately, it seems like I'm no longer getting those keys. So I'll probably be doing Planetfall for the better part of, you know, the kind of the foreseeable future. Um, but that what I do on Mondays might be changing uh, depending on uh, on how, you know, kind of what the future holds. I'm sort of preparing for a time where I'll be um, I'll be looking to fill that with other activities. But again, I really like Age of Wonders Planetfall, and I'll probably be playing that for uh, a while still. Uh, and then on Wednesdays and Fridays, it's been a bit open. I've been playing Cloudpunk lately, but I'm probably going to be spending a lot of time with uh, Phantom Brigade, which was just recently released by um, the company that did uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer, um, Brace Yourself Games, wonderful Canadian development studio in um, Vancouver. Uh, and then also Industries of Titan, which is their sort of city builder simulation game. Uh, but Wednesdays and Fridays, I have a little bit more, uh, it's a little more open-ended. Uh, and then finally, uh, a pre I do a pre-recorded video on Tuesdays, so tomorrow, and I'm playing the Elder Scrolls series for the first time. Uh, I did Arena, which is the first one, Daggerfall, which was uh, number two, and I'm now onto the DLC of Morrowind. Um, and what's unique about that one <coughs> is... Um, I do a dark elf voice for the entire broadcast. So, uh, if that is something that strikes you as entertaining, uh, you can tune in for that tomorrow. I do have a YouTube. Uh, YouTube.com. Actually, you know what? Do I have a command for that? I do not. Uh, that should take you there. Um, and if you, particularly if you want to see how I started this, um, this campaign, how I, I started off, um, you will be able to watch the VOD of that, along with any of the other, uh, any of the other Age of Wonders ones. Okay. Anyways, I was saying that we were thinking about Colony Lord. So, uh, Agrarian Ideals turns out gives food and happiness, uh, energetic efficiency. The fact that it gives production income as well makes me want this even more. And then it is it is actually really interesting to see scientific method. Also, the fact that it gives a cosmite increase is pretty wild too. But in this case here, I think production and energy lets me uh, not just field larger armies, but it also lets me um, boost my production. By the way, there's a couple of secret... Com well, not like super secret, but there's a couple of fun commands in there, which I don't think anybody's noticed. So, Oh, thank you very much. 
Yeah, I've actually been trying to do some more, um, I've tr been trying to do some more, like, YouTube-only stuff as well, but my primary, my primary, um, outlet is Twitch, so. Um, alright, so we're, we'll do energetic efficiency just because I, I really want, I really want to see how these, uh, Lord, ah, here we go. Okay, so, link you to Townsend Folly. Uh, bonuses activate in three turns. I wasn't expecting that. All right, so this guy is going to hold the line against the barbarian hordes. Production ready. And yeah, at this point, Townsend Folly's just got to crank out as many units as possible because it's pretty clear that we're going to be overrun if I if I don't uh, manage my borders. As for the rest of it, I think we will see what the next turn brings. All right, well. We knew that was coming. Um, so we did augment our power. I don't think it's... A, yeah, so uh, we actually augmented the power by 100. So just out of curiosity, so one uh, comparison I'll make um, for those of you who are fa fans of strategy games. For those of you who maybe have seen um, Total War, this game does have an auto combat option, but what's nice about it is you can run it. Oh, this is great, yeah. So I didn't need to do the combat in this case. I only lost one of the colony militia, so I, you know, I didn't need to worry too much about the difficulty. What's nice though is that you, uh, you can hit the retry button if you didn't like what the AI did. Sometimes you can also hit watch replay just to see how the AI uh, plays it. I am always fond of saying that getting my ass kicked by the AI is, uh, is a really good way to learn learn the game. Uh, all right, Anisa Zelenzo says the smells, the colors. I feel I'm reborn as an entirely different being. But what's this? Why are those insects badgering my skin? Why does the sun burn my face just for the wind to freeze it? All the conflicting sensations are assailing every part of my body. It is all too overpowering and unrelenting. No, I must return to my DVR suit. Breathe, uh, breathe its comforting and predictable stale air. Calm my eyes with the digital readouts from my visor. I never realized how much stress and horror ordinary races constantly receive from their environment. It was foolish of me to seek changing my existence to something less. Are you sure you want to turn back now, after everything we've accomplished? Our existence isn't all that bad once you've had time to get accustomed to it, says the lady who dresses up in armor. <laughs> yes, I'm certain, but it's not all for the worse. My research may have been folly, but it made me appreciate my own nature again. As Dvar, I have temp uh, tampered and tamed all the unpleasantries other races must endure day by day. I am one of the lucky ones. Objective complete. All right, so we got a bunch of food for that. The Imperial Dragonfly, I almost never use the um, kind of the quest reward weapons. Again, uh, comparing this to the fantasy game, uh, there are still kind of magical items that you pick up. Although it's kind of the Arthur C. Clarke sort of, you know, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from, uh, from magic sort of idea. And we got some science out of that, so we can take the reward. Now, I think I'm gonna clear these guys out uh, just so I can get the resources. Um, but I got to think of the order in which I want to do things. Let's start with luminance. Let the light bring us burn brightly. Send a gleam across the bay that the poor struggling souls adrift in the dark torrents may guide their vessels safely ashore. Lucala Candeliri, guardian of photons. So we chose this research uh, pre in the previous stream, and the reason we did that was so that we can get our light uh, bringer unit back. So I'm probably going to be a little bit more willing to. Uh, to, to not reload when I lose units like that. Uh, you just sub to YouTube for the first time. By the way, you're from the Cult of Simulator Wave. Oh, well, ah, oh, that's great. Thank you very much for the bits that you've been given, Nick. And um, it's uh, it, it's obviously always really good to, to hear so many people coming in from Cult of Simulator. Um, it's, I, one of the biggest things about that one is that that was me genuinely making an effort to try and do, you know, the this sort of pseudo tutorial video, but also the videos that I'm doing right now. Those have been like a very deliberate effort to try and do something that is for YouTube. And those have also been the most successful videos that I've done on YouTube. And so it's actually been really nice to see people react to that in the way that's sort of intended. Now, obviously, everybody wants to grow bigger. I'm no different. But it's actually really cool to have people um, sort of recognize the effort and uh, and and sort of to be able to, to see the... Um, see the payoff for some of that. So 
uh, it's it's really nice to hear that. And again, I may not necessarily do as much live cult of simulator anymore, just because in the end, I, I've wanted to make sure that I get to do some of this the other stuff. I mean, eventually, Book of Hours is going to be released too, so I want to clear up some space for that. But I thought doing YouTube for cultist would be a really good way of uh, would be a really good way of sort of balancing the two uh, the two priorities. All right. So again, we've got our Lightbringer unit. So I now have sort of my replacement for the uh, for my my good archer unit. In fact, particularly good archer unit against um, against uh, the growth. And so I'm sort of back to this question in terms of what kind of units do I want to be building next? Uh, Spirit Flash is actually not a bad, uh, not a particularly bad upgrade because of its um, its ability to inflict soul burn. I haven't put the mods on for people to be able to get that bonus. Also, the Shield of Remorse is a nice mod for me to get because, again, it gives the it gives the soul burn, and I tend to get some bonuses for attacking soul burned units. Uh, then there's the argument for induction rights. Um, the biggest reason for that is so I can eventually get to Colonial Guard, and Colonial Guard is going to allow me to sort of spend some energy to summon units and to be able to upgrade units into to better ones. So I sort of have one of two paths I can go down. I can do the induction rights and sort, sort of start going down my racial bonuses right away. Or I can say, you know what, I want to invest a little Cosmite. I want to invest a little energy into starting to give, me, give my people uh, the mods that'll make them fight a bit better. And I'm actually genuinely split. Um, I'll take a minute here and I just want to remind myself of what Soulburn does. So as with all of these types of games, if you have ever question, just take a look in the... Usually they'll have some kind of a manual. Um, there's a couple things that could make this one... Nope, not Soulbound. Um, I think there's a couple of things that can maybe make the this uh, a little bit better. There's a couple of times where it says it inflicts this debuff on you, but it doesn't give you an explanation of what the debuff does. But for the most part, you can find what you need in here. So um, unit soul is on fire, exposing its true essence and weakness. Enlightened units deal plus 20% damage against this unit. <sighs> and everything, be it becomes enlightened by bringing up the shield of remorse. You know what? I am going to do it. And because it's just because so many of these units are melee focused and they have to kind of just run, they have to run into the maw. Uh, and uh, if I can get soul burn just before, like on the turn before... I start clobbering the enemy. That's a pretty that's a pretty sweet bonus. So uh, I'm gonna take Sweet Glade. That's the reason why I did the detour to clear out the Cosmite. So we'll uh, annex that sector. So for those of you who are coming from games like Civilization, one of the things that Age of Wonders Planetfall and this is different from Age of Wonders Three. Uh, one of the things that Age of Wonders Planetfall does differently is that there's no longer individual hexes for you to take. So you know how like in Civilization, there'll be like a really awesome luxury resource on this hex and then there'll be like another really good like military resource maybe on this hex. And you're like, ah, which one do I want to colonize next to right away? Or do I split the difference and not get the bonus of either of them? You basically... Even in uh, Endless Legend, there's a lot of agonizing over which particular hex you go on to, to maximize the, the benefits that you get. All of that has gone away in Age of Wonders Planetfall, and instead, each sector has its resources. And this comes from the type of sector it is. So, uh, Fragrant Plateau, its features are Arcadian, which give you one food, one... Actually, you know what? Let's go for the one that I just annexed, or will be annexing, Sweet Glade. So, it's Arcadian, which gives one food, one energy. And it's Fertile Plains. Fertile Plains gives one food and one science. So, that's uh, two food, one energy, one science. It also has a river in it, which will potentially give some other bonuses. Uh, a meadow, uh, which is plus 10 food. That's one of the reasons why I cleared that out. And then finally, it has a Cosmite node, or particularly a Cosmite Spatial Rift. And Cosmite is a very important, very strong uh, sort of military resource inside of this game. So again, one of the things that I want to stress about this game is because it has a little bit more of a developed combat system than what you'd normally see inside of a 4X game, 
what you start seeing is maybe some of the the individual management that you might do in comparable games some of that's been abstracted away into systems like you know you just kind of expand out to sectors rather than you know focus on individual hexes of uh, resources and then as you can see um, the combat layer was informing some of my strategic decisions by virtue of the fact that i was clearing out enemies that were occupying certain strategic resources so it uh, it works quite well. There are non-combat uh, victory conditions, but I sort of think that this game is a little bit more combat focused than some of the other 4X style games. Uh, the remains of this transport contain a salvageable energy pod worth 23 energy. Unfortunately, its destroyed systems reveal no data on the convoy's origin, destination, or what led to its destruction. And again, the whole plan with these guys was to be able to move them back to this. Uh-oh. So, I'm pretty sure they're going to be able to come after these guys if they want. I should have been a little more thoughtful about my movements. Okay, so you're not limited to just one hero. Uh, German Botluff wants to join me. Now, we can take a look at him, but I'll, I pretty much always bring them in. It turns out he is uh, a Xenoplague knight. So, with that in mind, I actually have a very good compliment for, I believe we called him Mr. Slimy in the in the dialogue. So he'll become the commander of this army. So let me just take a look at what I'm building. So we've already got the, we've got the Paladin Protector, we've got the Paladin uh, Aspirant. We're building three, four, five. Okay, so we'll take out one of the Aspirants. And... It's actually, uh, it's, I'm genuinely curious about whether I want to get rid of my squ Scryers and um, either my Scryer or my Augur here. So the Augur's abilities are... That's not it. So the Gift of Adamant gives Last Stand, the Curse of Fatalism... Hmm... Gift of Adamance is pretty good. Oh, right, the Record Keeper. Um, does the Scryer have that? Okay, the Scryer is not a Record Keeper, so even though it gives precognition, I'm gonna spike that, and basically the Plague Lord's gonna gonna join this stack. Oh no, damn it. I shouldn't have done that. Because uh, I wanted I wanted them there. Alright, you know what? Screw it. Let's just... Uh, I'll do the auto combat. Oh, they lost their vehicle. I'm not gonna take that. Also, it looks like they got a whole bunch of more units, so uh, shame on me for not taking advantage of the fight right away. So um, I'll say this specifically to Javi, um, if you just recently picked up this game, one of the things I'll recommend, and this is definitely a do as I say, not as I do situation, um, one of the things that I can strongly recommend to this game is to read the units you're up against. So we've got a Devar Trencher. This guy just used Entrench, so unit digs in, creating a trench around it that lasts until the end of combat and provides cover. Shield Bash, so it's uh, it does a stagger. It, that basically, that'll remove an action. And then Spike Gun, single action. Uh, if they're entrenched, it does 20% extra damage, uh, and it's 18 kinetic strength. The uh, other unit that we're up against is a Runner. Now, the Runner has the Escape Module. This is a particularly annoying ability that they have. Uh, when this unit's health drops below zero, they're automatically teleported up to a random position three hexes away and revives with 15 health. So you actually have to kill them twice. And um, they uh, also have the Arc Bolas, which will... Uh, they do... So this guy does some pretty good flanking damage, but it immobilizes units. Uh, which is also nasty, and because it does arc damage, a lot of my units are weak to arc, and you'll see that in the unit descriptions. Um, again, the world of this game is kind of neat, so I will take the time to read out the... Uh... Oh, you're in the tutorial! Awesome! 
Um, yeah, I also recommend taking the time to read the text because uh, this has got a cool science fiction uh, world. I guess that means you're playing the Vanguard. The Vanguard are a really good one to start learning the game with. Uh, with anti-gravity boots, a scout like me can earn a decent wage in the service of the family. I try to steer clear of conflicts. I have no gift for Psytech. I don't have the tech for heavy battles. But what's the harm in sharing a little information for the thrill of sp uh, speeding over water and land alike? Slavery, corruption, smuggling. Sure, the Syndicate has questionable parts. But what doesn't have its questionable parts uh, Questionable parts these days? What do... Uh, what... We do what we can to survive. It beats starving. It's a living. Manti Yed, RV00098A, come fly with the runners. And then... We've got the indentured, so Pulse Repeater, Arc Power Blast, they also can do Overwatch. Uh, I don't think we have anything to worry about the Cerebral Control Callers. Uh, they just don't have the same units that will be... Um, they have the same units that'll be uh, kind of bu uh, buffing them. And then we've got the Devar Foreman. Uh, so the Hand Mortar, uh, this will also destroy uh, sort of cover. The healing kit, once per battle, so they'll heal for 25. Incentivize, which they've already used, gains additional morale. Uh, kinetic Punch, which I believe is a melee attack, because <laughs> it says punch. Um, I believe they heal, yeah, uh, heals each biological unit in stack for six per strategic turn. So I gotta be careful about that as well. As foreman, I am boss. I require nothing of my subordinates that I cannot do myself. I model myself after legendary forge master Devarnos. He reached into the mountain's heart and pulled out the gauntlet of empires. By the power of my gauntlet, my men are to stand strong against the terror of the fiends that lurk in the dark depths. When my men are broken, I repair them. With my mortar, I can place a charge to destroy at a distance. With the power of my fist, I break rocks and monsters alike. Foreman Gorgel Grok, RV32344M, Enemy Mines. So let me just make sure that... Uh, yeah, so this guy's actually a little bit of a higher target for his healing abilities now. So uh, one challenge we're going to run into is the threat of um, kind of the threat of uh, of the uh, the arc weapons. However, uh, there are some limits to how how bad that really is. Um, because, of course, I can set myself up for defenses, and I do have the precognition at the start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set people up. Again, I don't really seem to have any kind of worries as far as... Um, uh, I, there's not really the same kind of worry that I would have as far as the area of effect uh, that normally comes up. All right, I didn't think about this guy, so he won't be shielded. I don't get any early... Oh, that's not true. I do get an early attack. And unfortunately, my archer is not going to be too helpful here. So the question would be, do I want to put them right up the middle or do I want to commit them to one side of the fight? I think in this case, I'll commit them to sort of the left flank. And the question now would be, do I overwatch or do I shield? I think I'll do the overwatch. All right, so let's see what their reply is. There was a lie about the AoE. The explosion obviously is a worry, but... All right, so that's a shame about the Arc Bolas. That means they're sort of stuck in place for a couple turns. <laughs> I think there'll be a couple of other units that you uh, that you like moving on a little, uh, a little bit. Ooh, that was actually a really good round with that Pulse Repeater. So the one worry I have is about Operations being able to close the distance with these guys. So it looks like I'm going to need more than one turn to be able to get that done. So I think at this point, I just got to run up and smack whatever I can. So, of course, these guys are probably going to be able to deliver a heal. Um, but my new, my new goal is going to be to do as much damage as possible to the indentured. Well, that was really pretty, but I don't think that's going to accomplish what I need. Uh, 
Ugh, gross. Um, okay, uh, I'm gonna have to use Cleansing Light. So that's just to remove the immobilized so that I can get, uh, I can start chasing down these uh, flanking units. So they might use the immobilize, but obviously they're quite a bit more compromised here. Um, and almost enough to seal the deal, but okay. So I am a bit worried because these guys will get a flank on my commander, but I think we can survive it. They're definitely going hard on the commander, though. Cool. Okay, so first priority is to remove the most threatening. Um, Enemy annihilated. Now, in a perfect world, I was, I'd was i be able to distribute the heals. As the Oracle foretold. Huh. Okay. So I'm going to build my healing strategy around uh, my commander being here. Enemy this down. ultimately is going to mean that I'm probably not going to be as effective this turn as I normally would be. But it's a small price to pay uh, to make sure that I'm able to... to work. Oh! I didn't think that through very carefully. So this isn't quite as crazy as it seems. So, like, basically, this is just inviting them to say, okay, grenade in the middle here, right? Um, but now I've given her precognition. Um, now, in the desperate situation, I'm also going to be able to use Cleansing Light, but I'd like to avoid using that if I can. Okay, fair. question here is, am I able to do damage anywhere else? Enemy eliminated. So what I want to try and do here, if I can, is uh, put myself in a position where I'm going to be able to heal as many units as possible. So I'll take my commander, move her up like this. Get my guy hiding behind cover. Looks like I do get a blast on the enemy unit. Again, this thing is going to come back after I take it out, so I don't necessarily have to seal the deal. But what I get to do now, rather than... So I could take a pot shot, but it's a 38% chance. So what I can do instead, uh, direct my attention, make sure they don't get flanked. We do embolden. All of a sudden, everybody's looking pretty good as far as health is concerned. Uh, and if I'm particularly worried, I suppose I could get her to uh, to give her pre. Oh no, actually, she's I think still has precognition. Yes, so I could also get one of the other units to take precognition, but I think that's kind of a cowardly move. Uh, so what I'll do instead is just get a couple of entropic shocks on this unit, and then we should basically wipe them out next turn. Oh, actually, we might even be able to do it this turn. Oh, <laughs> that is not a good place for them to. All right, so basically, as soon as they make any move, this unit's going to smack them with their lance, and it might stun them. Yeah. Our 
forces are victorious. So a slightly better performance than what the AI did. You find a transport containing a salvageable production stash. Unfortunately, the stash's systems are destroyed and provide no data on its origin, destination, or the event that led to its destruction. Okay, so uh, I believe the... Oh! Uh... Okay, um, so uh, this is fulfilling one of the objectives. Uh, Rascal gave you a different suggestion to deal with the Mice uh, Mycelian threat. I don't know if it's Mycelian or Mycalian. I think it's Mycelian. Uh, he wants you to fabricate a sweet grain and fill it in a pond. Uh, sorry, sweet grain mush and fill it in a pond at Forlorn Peaks. So we got to wait one turn on that. Um, now, unfortunately, these guys might be coming in to eat these guys, and that's no good. Uh, but there's not a whole lot I can do about it right now. So what I'm going to focus on is trying to get to Black Newt Swamp as quickly as I can. There is a small argument for making the detour to take out the growth over here. I think that's probably going to turn it into like a five or six turn wait though, so. Okay, um, I think I'm just going to let this guy sit in the capital for the Production time being. Ready. Uh, we'll add, so I definitely want a throne early. Uh, military infrastructure, no, you know what, military infrastructure goes on the back uh, back burner now because I have an ar a standing army. We'll do recreational dome first. And then eventually we'll field another army, but at this point I think probably some infrastructure may not uh, may not be the worst idea. Okay, um, I'm going to have to kind of cross my fingers as far as my uh, seer is concerned, but otherwise we're looking okay. Alright, lucky me. So, unfortunately we're going to have to get sidetracked it looks like so the question is do I try and protect sweet glade or do I yeah I think I have to and then I'll give him something to think about by moving to gilded greensward it's just because damister is still building its um it's still building its uh um its military infrastructure There's a way to do anything. There's also a smarter way to do anything. Trade secrets are often more about a well-trained workforce than a secret sauce. Tony Rubio Strong, Manpower and Machine Motivational Consulting. So of course the reason we did that was because we already had some production upgrades. Uh, that's just gonna double down on a couple of things we've already put in place. So the next step will be food development for the exact same reason. So if we take a look at the exploitations I've got, Right now, we've got food exploitation on Utopian Rainbow Fields. We'll have production exploitation on Vine Grove. And then eventually what we're going to have is uh, agricultural exploitation on uh, both um, Gilded Greenward, sorry, Gilded Greensward and uh, Sweet Glade. So when the time comes for uh, German uh, Bottolf to become a lord, uh, we're going to make him... This is basically going to be the breadbasket of the of the empire. It would be sort of nice to have something like science because of the extra cosmite, but it's really not uh, it's really not worth it on its own. Okay, so again, we'll keep you in play. Actually, you know what? It just occurred to me. Oh no, hang on. He doesn't have the skill points. That's right. Okay. Oh wow! So I get to do fill in mush. Oh, bro. Rock, 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 rock. The mush we spread seems to be attracting hordes of bombardons from all over. I've never seen that many in a single location. I wonder what's going to happen next. Oh yeah, so we're locked in. So if I th if I thought I was going to die <laughs> last turn, this this is not uh, this is not helping things. I wonder why I wasn't allowed to do that last turn. Okay, we'll keep you in place. Keep you in place. Sector annexed. Let's see what happens. Okay, I guess it makes sense that they'd go for the weaker target. Mercifully, they did not uh, take out my seer. 
The excrement left by the feasting Bombardons dip, uh, dripped into the river, which carried it downhill into the Shroomward Forest. And there, I don't believe it. The acidic goo is dissolving even the metal parts of the mycelian compound. Disgusting, yet effective. The numbers have been completely decimated. It is beyond me how you could have predicted such a coincidence, Rask a coincidence Rascal, but remind me never to doubt your advice again, even when it may sound absurd. Objective completed. Alright, so uh, to my mind this means that Damster is sort of protected, um, and what we want to do now is start moving towards our next, uh, our next colony, which will be Truchet. Uh, of course, on the way I'm going to want to fulfill sort of my little... Um, little oh, actually, it looks like... Uh, Looks like I still need to to actually complete the, the task, so I'm going to be a little careful about how I move, just to make sure that I'm not uh, walking into a, a danger zone. Now, here's a question. Can I... Yes, I can move in on the Marauders. I will try and make this an auto combat just because I don't think this is all that interesting to go up against. And we didn't lose anyone. So here's a big reason why I'm doing the combat uh, improvements that I'm doing. These guys can now be turned into paladin protectors, both of them, which is pretty cool. And these guys are unhappy, so how close am I to getting that... Recreational dome up. Uh, let's put that above the throne. As much as I would like to have the throne, um, I think I need to focus on my. I think I need to focus on my infrastructure. Now we get a total of four additional colonies, so I can try and pick up the deep deep sea crack for the energy. Try and take organic food compound number five, and then sexual garden robot reserve. Um. Or what? One, two, three. So then I take organic food compound. Could theoretically also go for the Cosmite, but I have a feeling it'd probably be better just to build a colonizer at that point. Um, see, the thing is, I'm not 100% sure why I really want both territories to be absorbed into Townsend Folly. You know what, for now, I think I'm going to do Deep Sea Crack. Okay, again, we'll keep you in place. Production ready. I do need to deal with the unhappiness at some point, but... And I'm not actually going to be able to do the upgrade anytime soon. So... I'm going to be a scumbag again. Uh, it's the 23rd. Let's see if now I've got a little more familiarity whether or not I'm going to be able to make anything anything new out of it. Actually, first of all, let's see how well the AI handles it. Oh my god, yeah, that's not even remotely under discussion. So let's see if I can do this any better than last time. I'm actually also going to try a completely different approach, which is I'm going to focus everyone on one of these flanks. Um, it's basically something like this. Thanks a lot, Band of Goblins. Have a great uh, great evening. Good luck with your D&D, &D, and uh, I will see you next time you stop by. It's great to have you in here, as always. So again, the idea behind this one is just to see what happens when I make them uh, come after me. 
they are still able to do stuff like take over my um, my units or inflict insanity and whatnot. But if I the the plan here is just to try and make them work for the debuffs that I that they apply to me, and basically to be able to sort of take them on from a position of relative strength. So they'll probably spit up on the. Yeah. I mean that's not a bad way of getting rid of multiple precognitions. Um, But kind of the hope now is that I'll be working around the edges and sort of close in on the Tormentor. Operations or ready. alternatively, we might be able to run up the middle and be able to take him that way. Um, so... Start with a good old Lance to the face. It's a little crappy that I wound up with a... What? Let's just keep to the plan. Okay, that'll finish him off. The question is at what cost? So you know what? I think this one I'm going to go balls to the wall. We'll get a quick pistol shot. So I'm going to need to dedicate two units to take this thing out. Um, well, let's not stand on ceremony. Let's just get the... So there's a small worry that I have here. There's one of two things that I can do as far as the... Um, Enemy as far as my hero is concerned. I can get them to get Gift of Precognition, so that's going to protect them from one source of damage. The problem is, is that it's not so much the fact that uh, these units are it's not so much the fact that these units are going to be damaged it's the fact that uh, this unit might be rendered insane you know what I'm still going to put the precognition down though that's probably going to give him a it'll give him something to think about that's got to give him an overwatch yeah okay cool how you doing, The Exception? Great to see you. This is hard. It's just annoying to deal with three people attacking you. Uh, so three people on the strategic layer or three people on the uh, in the mode that I'm in? All right. I definitely need to start putting some cleansing light down. I'm feeling pretty good, The Exception. I'm always happy to be playing some uh, Age of Wonders uh, Planet Falls, so... So of course I would have preferred to put a cleansing light on these guys, but let's deal with uh, let's deal with the world as it is, not as how I would like it to be. Enemy All right, two. that was glorious. And actually, come to think of it. There is the possibility that this person's going to... Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, this should get rid of insanity. So we should be able to zap him with a lance. I'm spreading my units a little bit thin here, um, but I guess the question is, which is the one I can have the most effect on? So this one's going to get a tar uh, an attack of opportunity. Um, so we want to focus down this guy. Okay, this guy's just been cured, so that's not going to count for anything. And they can't do the precognition yet, so we'll move the scryer up. And it's just a little entropic shock, but it's better than nothing. Although I may have just opened him up for some pretty savage attacks. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's 
So again, that's not unwelcome given the fact that we've got a me uh, melee unit that's going to be able to come in and take its revenge. Now, this unit might be in a little trouble depending on how many moves. Okay, cool. So I pretty much have to use Cleansing Light here. And I'd like to use Cleansing Light on this unit, but I need to, I need to keep my... Uh, I need to keep my hero up, so um, let's, let's think about the best way that I can clear out the riffraff here. So this will clear that overwatch, and I should be able to wipe this unit out. Okay, first things first, let's use the volt, yeah, we'll use the volt pike to slap this guy around. This guy's completely trapped, so there's not a whole lot I can do about that. This is actually a trickier puzzle than I thought it would be. Okay, Bailey Overwatch is dealt with, so... That hasn't eliminated the threat to the commander, but it has reduced... Uh, reduce my worries. Um, I'm going to use move this unit up one just so that it eliminates the potential threats. So I suppose the real question is, so I could put the precognition down and make sure that this unit survives, or I could hope to get lucky with the entropic shock. Not really worth it. Um, yeah, you know what? It, this is a cowardly move, but it's the right move. All right, well, they basically just gave up on life there. <laughs> so um, let's do what we can to try and uh, free our people from the cage. So Stagger did the job there. Unfortunately, it looks like they're still stuck. Um, so it looks like I'm not actually able to accomplish that much as this unit. So we're going to take some cover. I'm going to try and be a little clever with uh, my hero unit. So the Paladins probably shouldn't be hogging all the heals like this, but it's what this unit's able to do. And again, we'll do whatever damage we can to uh, to make this, this unit sad. And in theory, I could do another Cleansing Light, but I, I don't know who the obvious target is for that. All right. So, I mean, that was a costly win. The predicted outcome. Uh, the mode... Okay, yeah, yeah, the, the tactical layer. So I mean that was a uh, that was not the easiest fight. I now have all elite units, which is kind of nice. Um, but we did just get a we did just get a pretty strong new resource, the Psy Shrine. So that's an additional ten research and energy that we earned off of those uh, off of those those hurts, <laughs> um, and we can level up the character. So revealing soul again. That's tempting because of the enlightened and soul burn. Um, when not in a vehicle, heroes attack. Yeah, I'm always going to be in vehicle. So, ground commander seems to make a lot more sense because there's so many heavy units, and it's most of. I think most of this is going to be heavy. Um, field repair droid vehicles driven by this hero gain regeneration. If destroyed, the vehicle is restored at 50% at the end of battle. Oh, that's a really strong one. So if I were to go for that, what would be the two? For every level of reputation above neutral, gain plus five health and one armor. That's also... 
This unit has precognition, also gains 20% damage on all abilities. It always starts with precognition. Jesus, this they're just full of... They're just full of really good uh, abilities for this character. Um, so Ground Commander is now the least attractive just because of all of my other options. Um, I think I'm going to avoid the Revealing Soul for now because we've got a mod that we can use to apply that. Um, so I think with that in mind, we'll go for the Field Repair Droid. And while I'm at it, I'll do Attenuators just because the ability to... Um, I think the ability to avoid being staggered, especially in a unit that's so reliant on, um, on melee attacks, is a nice thing to have. So we'll give you a Shield of Remorse. And we're going to apply that to everyone. This makes my units less effective at uh, combat for a while, but that's a price I'm willing to pay. Okay, so we're in penance. Repentance is not punishment. It is celebration. It is a path to becoming trustworthy. Wiser powers do not share their secrets with those whom they cannot trust. Lusa Malus. Guardian of Gravity. So that was the mod that we just got. Now, at this point, I really want Colonial Guard because being able to, um, what was it, uh, elevate to Protector, target army uh, evolves a prime rank Paladin Aspirant to a Paladin Protector. It permanently gains plus one status effect resistance. One drawback about the prime rank um, uh, Aspirant to Protector is that I do lose the I do wind up losing the melee, uh, sorry, the uh, ranged ability, but I think being able to kind of get some sort of free, some free paladins is, is kind of hard to argue with. Food is a governing tool. Just as fuel is essential to power a machine, food is the ruling principle of happy, strong, and productive colonists. Tony Rubio Strong, Manpower and Machine Motivational Consulting. Now, my main research has kind of been dealt with. I suppose I've got this coastal unit, or this coastal area now. So there's one argument for colony infrastructure just so I can get extra Cosmite. Then there's the aquatic development because I've got the coastal area. Uh, alternatively, alter uh, area surveillance, covert infiltration. These are relatively cheap. So um, And river exploitation would also be good because I do have a r river running through my territory. So I actually basically have an argument for every single one of these. Uh, let's do aquatic development because I tend not to... I tend to neglect that a little bit more than I really should. Empire task completed. Okay. I suppose next round we'll see what happens in Shroomwood Forest. Uh, Tendril Trouble. Our roots feel unpleasant next to you, Eluna Leoness. We sought symbiosis, but have received parasites instead. Pests should be swiftly eliminated, lest they spread. Our tendrils come for you, enemy of Sonoril. You can negotiate for peace by contacting this faction's dwelling. Well, uh, I didn't think that negotiation was an option. So let's see. They want 150 energy and 30 influence for the privilege. Um, I'm actually reasonably convinced I can hold my own against these guys. Now, this sucks um, because they can kind of attack whichever region they want. I think Damister is the higher priority to hold, though, so it means I may lose Sweet Glade. Uh, we do at least have a militia now. Um, but uh, I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be a bit of a... It's going to be a little touch and go for the next little while, I think. Um, uh, 
Okay, these guys are ready to move out, so let's, uh... They're not going to be able to do anything about the next round, but they may, may be able to help later on. Okay. Hydro and deep sea crack. I'll move that ahead of the throne as much as it pains me to do so. Uh, we'll give these guys civil engineering first. And then at some point I'll have to do the... Well, you know, let's just get the food out of the way too. Um... We'll start. So I'm probably going to wind up ripping these out um, as time goes by, but for now I'll uh, I'll go on the things that are focused on sort of building up my infrastructure. Okay, I got to keep her in place. Uh, let's see what happens in Shroomwood Forest. This place bears the mark of uh, marks of entropy. The Mycelians themselves didn't show any signs of such deep corruption. So likely whatever happened here only attracted them. Aspirants, did any of you find uh, the remains of the Valiant Steward from the village of Damister? We've only retrieved this key, engraved with the emblem of Damister, Ekiv Alunalianus. Uh, uh, Sadly, it seems to be the only thing left of the Steward, not even a scrap of her battle suit, as far as we can gather. Alas, then we cannot give her the burial she would have deserved, but at least the village of Damister should be more secure now. Objective completed. I'm curious if my uh, reputation goes up. Guess not. So I gotta be a little careful here. So I do want to sort of reconnect these armies. Um, and of course, this will sort of form the basis of my next, uh, my next, um, uh, kind of my next stack. Uh, but I need to deal with the, uh, I need to deal with the fact that I've got the Marauders on their way. And then we've also got a growth, uh, a growth army threatening uh, Damister. Production ready. Production ready. I can, of course, try and rush some of these as well, but I prefer to. I kind of prefer to um, hold things as they are, and then uh, use that energy towards building extra units. Sector annexed. So let's see what the butcher's bill is for next turn. Okay, so they're cutting off my Cosmite, um, but I suppose just as well they're not coming after Sweet Glade. <laughs> okay, so the real question is, can I get these guys? No, sadly, I can't get them any closer. So, I mean, this is really tempting to... It's actually really tempting to just sit and wait. But I'm not going to be able to take them out next turn anyway. The thing is, it'd be really cool to be able to train these guys, but... Alright, let's see what the AI does. So, of course, I was hoping to spend my time uh, with Black Newt Swamp, but... <laughs> apparently that's not in the cards. And this, I'm just going to have to accept the loss of Deep Sea Crack if that's if that thing decides to to take over the the base. There's no hope of me recovering that. <laughs> well, they're brave. Um, well, let's see what the let's see what the auto combat does. Okay, so that says that they'd win. I don't really have that much of a hope that I'll do better, but let's uh, let's see if I can pull pull this out of the fire. Okay, so we've got uh, the Chalice Steel Eater. Um, they're devastating in melee. Oh yeah, but they also have this, uh, the spike. Yeah, so these things are just miserable overall. Um, the best I can really hope for, I think, is to... I think if I can somehow isolate them and just sort of bash them, bash them one at a time, that's the, really the only hope that I have. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll um, cluster up over here. 
we do have the we have one turn where I'm sort of protected but let's see what they do So like if I can peek my guys out around the edge like this, oh, but he's got two. Available. Oh wow, this is really just melee stuff, huh? Okay, well that still gives me some information. Um, But it is melee on melee. That's actually going to be... That, that is definitely going to be something that makes me sad. So I don't exactly want to tempt fate on this, but being able to get um, Lash of Adversity as an early, uh, early hit to bait them out, that would be nice. Ah, good. So we're going to be able to gang up on him. So the grays kind of sucks because now I've lost my precognition. But there are other benefits. So I want to put myself as far away as possible and still be able to give my guy the bonuses. Try something a little sneaky like this. I hope it works. Nice. So, I mean, we're now exposed here, but this is going to be a guy who should still be fumbling each turn versus, and then a free one. So now we've sort of tilted the scales a bit in our favor. Oh, it's just one turn that happens, okay. But again, similar idea, right? We're now at a point here where... Um, oh no! Uh, okay, well, didn't seem to matter either way. Uh, and again, we're a bit lucky because uh, this guy is sort of held back. So let's see... Let's see if we can do anything exciting. I'll try and get as close as I can to the action without putting this unit in too much risk. Sadly, it's still not enough to seal the, the deal. But I just need one of the militia to, to live by the end of this thing. Interesting. So this guy's still got his precognition up. Enemy down. Well, that's unfortunate. So if I wanted, of course, I could do something like Cleansing Light, but at this point that's wasted money because I'm fairly certain I'm going to be able to take out this unit. They shall be honored. Um, I think the Lash of Adversity is a better... So this is going to protect my units from taking too much damage. Although, again, there's the precognition. I could have put down something that gives him crits, but the lash should hopefully seal the. Our there we go. forces are victorious. People don't work if they don't feel safe. People won't share if they don't feel safe. People won't care if they don't feel safe. See the common thread here? Provide for our safety, and we will work to establish your ideals. Alain Dismarta, Labour Organizer. 
Okay, so we got this so that we could start upgrading our aspirants. Um, now the question is, do we want to be going for modifications to our units to make them more powerful? In particular, uh, do I want to be doing that to my paladins, or do I want to start swelling my ranks with uh, the wardens, the watchers, and other upgraded units? So if we go for uh, mods, we can get combat uh, manuscripts, units gains detection, uh, Oath of Purity, plus four status resistance and damage over time immunity. Now that's pretty good given some of the stuff that we've been going up against. Um, Entropic Foundations aren't really going to help my Paladin units. Magnetic Energy Storage, Arc Weapons have a 12 strength chance to apply Static Charge, a stacking debuff that lowers the target's Arc Resistance by one Arc for two turns, and then a 10% increase to damage. That's cool. Um, that's actually something that would be uh, that'd be nice when my units get sort of stuck into battle. Um, but at this point, I think some diversity in units might be a little bit better. So I'll take the three turns for the warden ranks rather than the uh, any of the others. Operations available for priming. Okay, so at this point here, I want to start bringing people up to. Um, I'm going to do some elevate to protectors here so that I can uh, I can make the most of my my situation. Uh, let's take our new unit to um, go after the Marauders. In this case, we won't do any TAC Ops. So again, this is a fairly basic uh, battle, so I didn't really want to put too much, uh, too much into that. Although, I do seem to have neglected my Augur. So let's give you a Shield of Remorse and an Oath of Loyalty. Grants one armor for each adjacent unit with an Oath mod. Hmm. So I could probably put that on other people. Um, I'm going to just keep this mod for now. Um, I do actually see some value in applying that other mod, but I want to clear out the growth first. Uh... And yes, I'll be a scumbag again. So this is this was just something that was generating enemy units. Um, I'll try the auto combat, but I think it's going to make me lose stuff. Oh, guess not. And here are our Dvar. Salutations, honorable Eluna Leonez. Uh, do you require assistance? Or actually, maybe it could be. Yeah, I guess it's Leonis. Uh, may our people leave the Dark Age behind us and prosper together. So let's start with a non-aggression pact. I'm not sure I'm ready for an open borders yet, though. So Your proposal is very welcome. We think alike. Improving our diplomatic state was the right thing to do. New treaty was formed. Review treaties in the treaties list to the right. Now, I am slightly curious to see whether or not the growth will accept a peace treaty. Nope, they still want the same payment. Uh, so I'm not opposed to peace with the growth, but I think it's probably better for me to try and like earn as much as I can. Um, like basically to be able to take organic food compound and central garden robot reserve. If I can claim those sectors for myself before uh, before you know getting the peace treaty, that just means that I'm walking away from this war with the most uh, the most stuff I could possibly get. Okay, so we really need to actually find this lost toy. So let's move on with that. Um, I'll also, I think I'm actually going to move this guy into Townsend Folly just so that I can start uh, loading them up with some units. And looks like we've got another commander upgrade. So, um, Oracle's protege is one skill point too high, which is a shame because I think their reputation is going to be pretty good. And um, it would be cool to have the extra health and armor. Uh, Intuitive Strikes gives me 20% for pre having precognition. Cleansing Light, uh, I never like using that because I prefer to use my heroes offensively. Aura of Guidance gives increased accuracy, which is nice, but is it the best four points that I can spend? I actually think in this case, Ground Commander makes a little more sense, because I have so many heavy units, and I'm going to be getting an additional heavy unit before too long. And... I mean, this guy's got to go out picking fights, otherwise he's never going to get his units improved. So let's move them down here. 
Um, but there is the important step now. So we're going to take Oath of Loyalty and we're going to apply that to basically every paladin I can get my hands on. The reason I did Oath of Loyalty is just so that I can justify clustering everybody up. Production ready. Okay, that's gotten rid of my unhappiness, which is good. Um, apparently I can already do my food sector upgrade, so I'm, st I'm just behind the eight ball on everything I want to do uh, production-wise. Um... I do want the throne because my main character is almost certainly not going to be in the area. So the one drawback here is that I have n really no militia, um, but I am also going to be building most of my units in Townsend Folly. So I feel like that's a decent calculated risk. Production ready. Uh, we should be doing okay for food. Um, I think at this point, investing heavily in the military infrastructure while boring is probably the right call to make here. Okay, so we've got Elevate to Protector uh, here. And we will queue the next Operations one up. Operations available for priming. So it basically means I'm not going to have any kind of aspirants um, kicking around anymore. But basically, I just kind of got uh, I just got a free upgrade to a paladin protector. So comparing 18 uh, melee attack, 15 ranged attack, 15 volt saber, but it's a repeating attack, and it also has embolden and protector shields. So it's basically an army full of uh, army full of robots, which I'm okay with. Uh, these guys are heading back to the capital just so I can start loading them up with some uh, some more effective units. These guys, let's get them clearing out the growth. And again, I'm trying to make a little more progress than I had last week. I'm, I'm actually half an hour um, away from, from being finished. So I am kind of overdoing it on the auto combats, but that's just so that I can have an opportunity to clean stuff up if they go wrong. Uh, we're okay. We got more science for being at war with the growth. This is, by the way, one thing I never really realized about the game uh, until until later on. Um, it's actually so. I always try to play nice with the the residents, but it really is to your advantage to pick a fight with someone you think you can you can kind of bully for a while because the advantages you get from just some early conflict with a local group. Um, I think you tend to make a bit more progress and you tend to get a bit more than trying to to have two sets of friends. Just a personal uh, guess. So anyways, I'm going to do Agrarian Ideals and this is because he will become Lord of um, Damister. And we've already got our mods, so I'm happy, uh, happy with where they are. The people need a friend they can entrust with their power. A warden to guide them safely along the upward path who will not be diverted by the lure of popularity or self-promotion. Orphan bands, civil protector. Okay. So, uh, I'm kind of back to the same... I'm, I'm sort of back to the same dilemma I was at before. Um, so I could do Watcher Ranks. Watcher Ranks is kind of tempting because it is a unit that will give my units more experience. Um... I suppose I already I also have uh, I have another unit that'll that'll do the sort of the same thing, but I believe watchers are a little more effective than the current unit that um, that'll give the uh, the bonus. Um, I think yeah. So the question really comes down: Do I want to go down the arc path or do I want to try and swell the ranks? I think for the moment I'm actually going to do the arc. This is just because it's going to give me some more mods that I can put on my units. It's also because the next few... It, the, the consideration I'm making is this. So if I want Watcher ranks in four turns, it implies that I'm going to want to be able to build one of those units within four turns. But take a look at the stack that's going to be getting the next batch of units. It's already got uh, Vraskal the Seer, which is clearly, um, clearly better than me just adding another Watcher on its own. So I'm actually going to have several turns in Townsend Folly where I'm building up some other 
sort of other defenders uh, or other units. And uh, in that particular case, I, I sort of think the better call here is to invest in my other military technologies. And then when these guys start getting filled up, then I can do the watcher units. Then I can start thinking about how I'm going to sort of uh, change the composition of my, my armies a little bit. So here we'll do magnetic energy storage. And again, this is mostly just so that I can start unlocking other arc technologies. Um, entropy is nice, but the thing is, is that the only units that can use entropy are not my frontline units. And so basically being able to improve my arc units will allow me to, um, it'll allow me to pack a little bit more punch. In the end, the units that use entropy at the moment are the ones that are buffing my other units. On nearly every inhabitable planet, Oceans are engines of infinite mechanical energy, rhythmic sources of food and endless life, just waiting to be harnessed by someone clever enough to brave their tossing depths. Sammy Sellis, sailor and Star Union seashell salesman. All right, so this is really just to give um, my colony a, another set of things to upgrade, but that colony is clearly going to be occupied with other things. Uh, environmental conditioning is attempting one because of the river bonus. Um, the other alternative would be area surveillance. I think I'm going to do area surveillance just so I can start unlocking some of my uh, covert operations. Um, but I do think the river bonus will be nice for uh, for this this region I'm about to capture. I also have rivers in th all three of these. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should have gone for the river exploitation earlier. I'm not too worried about it. One turn isn't the end of the world. Production ready. All right. Okay, so these are marauders that are kind of in my way. I'd like to make it uh, to Newt Swamp, but no point in uh, in avoiding a fight. So again, we'll auto combat it. All right, that's more damage than I was expecting to take, but that's life. And same story here. Here, I think I'll lose a unit if I do auto. Apparently not. Looks like we're all ready to expand out. So the code word intelligence complex would be the nicest one to add, but it's also the one that I think is least likely to be um, to be effective. Um, so if I do this, she's already got a claim on it. I have a claim on this one though, so. We'll take Cherry Patio and we'll let the Dvar take the other. We did technically clear out this region, so I feel entitled to it. But uh, I don't need to... I don't need to be too much of a jerk about it. One thing that's funny here is if you take a look at... So I've got a... Um, I've got agricultural exploitation here, agricultural expo or will eventually be agricultural exploitation. Agricultural exploitation you can actually only have two of a certain type of exploitation. So here, I'm kind of wasting a bunch of uh, of agriculture. But I mean, it's it's everything that's surrounding this area, right? That's not a whole lot that I can. There's not a whole lot I can do about that. One of my regulars, a scientist developing arc weaponry, said that I was his inspiration. My android systems were specialized to avoid static buildup. Something about friction. Rub up against enough people, and it creates sparks. Emma 3, Ebot, and a patent dispute lawsuit. Okay, so similar question to last time. Do I want to wait five terms for Watcher ranks? Or do I want to take three and uh, start getting some buffs for my units? So the arc retaliation defense isn't too useful to me. It's it's not terrible in the sense that um, actually sorry I'm just gonna swallow a mouthful. I had some fries. Um, my units are weak to arc, so. Um, Arc Retaliation Defense would basically eliminate the weakness my Paladins have. In addition, the fact that it gets the extra shield also helps me with the, the thing I'm kind of weak to, which is ranged attacks. So again, the Paladins are going to be big suits of armor that are rushing into the front lines. And the question here is, how quickly can I close that distance 
And how can I minimize the damage I take before I'm able to start whacking people with my lances? So while I normally ignore the arc retaliation defense, there are this particular mod actually winds up solving a lot of problems that I run into with my particular units. The other thing I need to start keeping in mind, though, is that I, I'm now at a point where I'm, I'm actually full up on modifications. So let's take a look at what else we'll wind up getting if we go down the arc path. So there's the arc impact module um, that will give stagger. Now I believe we already apply stagger with our attack, so that's maybe not so that's maybe not so interesting. Although it does give us another twenty percent to damage. The stun module. Oh yeah, that's a pretty good one actually. Eight strength chance to apply stun. Uh, and, well, four strength because it's repeating. Positron technology. Uh, that's not quite what I need. Yeah, I don't know. I think the Electron Impact is probably the way to go, if I'm honest. Because, yeah, the, none of these Entropy weapons are going to change my arc to Entropy. I'm just going to have to deal with the fact that the enemies I'm facing are resistant to arc. And uh, my units are weak to arc. And I've clearly invested pretty heavily in my arc capabilities right now. So it's probably better that I just accept who I am and take the Electron Impact rather than trying to, you know, square the circle and, uh... Yeah, you know what, we'll do Electron Impact. If you want to improve your capabilities, you don't just set a goal, you must also monitor it. Only by carefully watching your progression, guarding against backsliding, can you achieve solid success. Tony Rubio Strong. Manpower and Machine Motivational Consulting. Okay, so there is something of an argument for doing things like Operation Effectiveness, Covert Infiltration. Operation Effectiveness in particular gives me additional uh, strategic, or sorry, ad additional doctrines. Additional doctrines are going to uh, basically buff my, my empire as a whole. But I did say how environmental conditioning helps my food. Uh, helping my food allows me to expand more rapidly and I have rivers in just about every single territory that I hold. So this is the nice thing about environmental conditioning. While technically I do get botanical gardens, the thing that's really nice about this one is that I don't have to build anything to get the advantages of environmental conditioning as opposed to energy development, research development, or colony infrastructure. So it does take a bit longer to research, but I prefer it to operation effectiveness. I'll also show you another reason Operations why. Operations available for priming. Um, for doctrine. So we've got duty of care, so that's an additional um, kind of like loyalty and influence from quests. Well, we're currently at war with the only quest giver, so that's not going to matter. Pre-battle predictions we've already got. Uh, so then there's the builder, 20% uh, less production for colony buildings. Not bad uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but maybe not the most important thing that I could be deploying right now. Uh, the employ, uh, sorry, the invader, extensive propaganda and indoctrination leads your troops to believe in their inherent superiority to the natives of this planet. Units gain 200 morale in a battle against independent units. And then the technologist gain two tactical operation points and tactical operations are 15% cheaper to use. Admittedly, I've been using the cleansing light quite a bit. So the, again, these are not necessarily bad ones for me to add, um, but there is something to be said for the fact that do I... The, the way to think about the cost for this is maybe not so much the doctrine slot or the energy that I'd be paying. So like 50 energy is not a whole lot if it's going to wind up saving me 15% of every cleansing light that I do. Maybe the other way of thinking about it is to say, would I be willing to give up the benefits of having, I guess it's 10 food for each river that I have. So one river, uh, two, three, four. I believe that'll be confirmed. Yeah, river runs through the sector, river runs through the sector. Uh, river. No river. No river. River. Oh yeah, actually I should have been paying attention. Okay, river here. So if I can get code word intelligence complex. 
So yeah, we've kind of got rivers everywhere. So at that, at, like, that's really a good argument for uh, for getting that bonus just because of how much food it'll give me. The other thing that's nice too is once I hit my cap as far as all of the the growth is concerned. I'm actually going to be able to send that, export that food out so that my other colonies can grow so much faster as well. Okay, so you go to Townsend Folly while I try to build you an army. Not quite sure how that's going to work, if I'm honest. Uh, let's give you water sectors, food sectors... I'll stick with that for now. Alright, what am I going to do with you? Um, I'm always nervous when I do this stuff. But I should... I really should try and take advantage of clearing out as many of these... Uh, these growth nodes as I can. Uh, Marauders are trembling in fear and trying to flee the battle. What do you want to do? We will allow them to retreat. Um, so I'm not clear whether or not... I thought you got the experience for it, but it seems like maybe you don't. Um, however, I do like the extra reputation. It does turn out that I have other... There's other benefits Reduction to having ready. a good reputation as one of these knights. Reduction ready. Okay, Damister has an unexploited sector. Is that Fragrant Plateau? No, it's Cherry Patio. Fragrant P Plateau is being taken by the Devar. You'll notice I'm knocking all of the specialist units down because Damister ultimately is not intended to be producing units. However, there is an argument for me to start putting it towards units because uh, of the Psy Shrine. I don't believe there's an equivalent upgrade for any of my other regions. I'm just kind of realistic about what Damister is going to be able to do right now. Okay, so let's see what the code word Intelligence Complex gives us. So as before, we'll do the auto combat. All right, so they did a number on my Plague Lord, but... So I think if I try and... Oh, interesting! So we don't actually need to fight anything for it. All right, well, <laughs> I know what I'm adding to my colony. And he's ready for an upgrade. So, of course, he's already the Lord. Um, so... Uh, Trailblazer doesn't make a whole lot of sense because he's not in a vehicle right now. Um, there may be an argument for the infantry and or ground um, again he's not in a vehicle so that doesn't count for anything uh, this is a shotgun maybe same range as a shotgun. I'm gonna say it's a shotgun. Gladden ethos. Good god. Melee attacks heal for 10. Yeah, but he doesn't do melee, so... Um, I am, however, gonna give him his shield of remorse, and... Don't really see this guy being beside many other units. Yeah, screw it. Okay. Um, the majority of my army is actually infantry at the moment, so we'll give him infantry commander and range specialist. And then next round we'll give him the heavy. All right. Time to complete the quest. Wild Bombardon, the frog-like creature stares at you with large, empty eyes. It surely is bigger and less plushy than you remember it from the vision. Just now, it casually swallows a deer fly. Guess who is next? Objective completed. It's unclear how this could happen, but it seems your psionic potential has given physical shape to the toy frog from your vision, except that it looks much bigger and dangerous. 
Okay, so apparently that's not the thing I need to be fighting. This is the thing I need to be fighting. However, this is a Marauder unit, so I am going to try and clear it out. Again, we'll do the auto combat first to see. Yep, we're not accepting any losses, especially given that I'm going to have to fight another Marauder unit. It's debatable as to whether or not this is the smartest attack that I can be doing right now. But, um, I don't know. I've bloodlust. Okay, um, so given that this is mostly assembly, this is actually going to be a bit harder than it seems. So we're up against, uh, first of all, Scavenger. These guys heal when they melee hit you. They're arc resistant. Uh, they also have a pretty nasty shotgun. These guys, of course, are just arc uh, arc throwers, but they're repeating arc throwers. The good news is, is that their range isn't quite as far as some of the other units. Uh, runners we've already encountered, so no surprises there. Uh, hacker, so this is another example of something that'll make me miserable. Uh, scrambling virus and... Oh, is he not able to hack? Anyways, the, the Hasher SMG can also be pretty devastating. Scrambling virus is going to be something that can hurt my, um, my mechanical units. And then finally, if that wasn't bad enough, we've got the Lightning Rider. Again, an arc unit. Um, we hope the assembly would fa uh, fail in the sand or run out of energy in the toxic wastelands. That's when we first saw the Lightning Rider hovering on the horizon. A basic Faraday cage protects its organic parts, while all around its edges it collects energy from the clouds with lightning rods. At first it stood in the sky, collecting the lightning. Then a thunderous arc of electrical energy leapt into our center. They scattered, despite my pleas that we fight back. Did they expect to outrun lightning? Ma Regnib, RV2223X, run away. So, arc thrower, it's a repeating arc weapon. Fortunately, it's f uh, five, um, five hexes, so it's not that close. It's also air to air. But then there's arc strike, single action, it staggers, uh, it has a two hex radius. Um, and uh, the couple good news, bits of good news about it is that it has a cooldown and it looks like it's melee focused. So if I can shoot this thing out of the air, uh, so much the better. But again, it's all arc resistant. So uh, this is an army that's kind of designed to, to be a bit more effective against my own, my own folks. However, I do have three paladins that I can sort of hold the line with, and that's exactly what I intend to do. So unfortunately, I don't quite get to do the same, um, I don't get to put the armor up like I would want. I get to do it for one of them. So here I'm just trying to take advantage of the Oath of Loyalty to, uh, to make the most of my, my circumstances. Okay, so... Again, it's mostly about the chip damage here. And it looks like this gentleman doesn't have a whole lot that he can do, so my second best is just going to be to set up an overwatch. Although, now that I think of it, this is going to be a pretty pathetic overwatch. Alright, so I expect I'll probably see the, ex the exact folly of, <laughs> of this approach. But I'm hoping that my O's of loyalty and my sort of my, my protective cones will uh, will see the day here. So one of these guys gets immobilized. Okay, so this is kind of tempting to blow up the, um, the explosive beside it. Oh wow, these guys are... Operations available. I definitely got lucky. Um, so... We'll just take our Volt Saber and beat the crap out of everyone who looked at me the wrong way. 
So this guy, uh, right now what I want to be doing is closing the distance with as many units as possible so that they get punished if they try and move away. The rest of this can, uh, you know, I, I can worry about the rest of it in terms of the cleanup, but right now, uh, so this guy gets to escape if I, okay, so it's actually more important to me that I be able to take this unit out. Also, we get oaths of loyalty to these two. Enemy destroyed. Okay, so um, I feel like I can do more damage to these guys by taking out this... So now I suppose the question is, what do I think I can do with my flaming bow? I don't get too reckless with the unit, but yeah, screw it. He's out in the open, so. So he's only going to have one move, so he's either, he's probably going to be able to, oh no. All right, so basically he can move or he can overwatch. So this guy's screwed. This guy's going to be able to do some pretty devastating damage uh, next turn. But of course, we all have all of our heals um, sort of packed away, ready to go. So let's see what happens. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, no. Damn, nation. Sorry to do this. I really don't want to have to pe rebuild one of those. I think like every combat I've done, I've reloaded it. So I completely neglected the network link hiding in the background there. I I actually tried to work out what the um, I tried to work out what the what the potential cost to me for units would be. Um, I'm gonna try something slightly different with my approach. Uh, nope, no point. It's just going to be the same start as last time, after all. I don't actually think this Overwatch wound up doing anything, but... Yeah, actually, there's really no excuse for me not noticing that, because he buffs this guy at the start. Oh, well. It's my game, I'll play it how I want. <laughs> so, I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting the scrambling virus not to be affected by the... Alright, so similar story to last time, we're basically just going to do the, the same as before. So I suppose what it really comes down to now is how do I handle how do I handle this dismount? Um, I 
I think in this case, this is one of the rare chances I get to um, to hurt the Lightning Rider in a meaningful way. Uh, this guy, yeah, he's got his Hasher SMG, but I get to slap him with my um, I get to slap him with my sword afterwards. So yeah, we'll we'll hit this guy. And then I suppose there's a couple of approaches I can take on this one. So if I'm really worried about the the health of this unit, um, I could use the precognition again. You know what? Um, I move them up. That's going to force them to... So the number of targets that they can go after now with a meaningful effect will be this one, this one, or this one. If they go after this one, they have to kind of go between my guys. So I think this winds up basically giving me a little more safety than the decision last time did. Does mean these guys are free to do what they want and they do have repeating arc weapons, but I think we're, I think overall we're in a better, um, we're in better shape. Okay, that was unlucky. <laughs> Alright, that was heavier than I expected, but Looks like we survived. Why did they get two moves? Now, here's where the fun for these units come in. So I get to move this guy up. No! Ugh. Okay, so I get to move these guys up. Um... So here, the worry isn't so much... Like, so they're compromised, right? So now I can remove the debuff, but also get a whole bunch of heals in. Now the problem is, is that this unit is now a lot more exposed than I want them to be. So unfortunately, I'm just going to have to pull them straight out, which is not what I would normally want to do. But, you know, that's... That's the state of the world I was given, unfortunately. Enemy eliminated. Okay, so basically, I get to decide... This unit, I think, basically, if they make a move, they're dead. Um, so now I just decide, do I want to tie this guy up into melee, or do I want to try and sh hit this guy out of the sky? Uh, this isn't quite enough to seal the deal, so I think I'll take my burning great bow and set them on fire. Huh. And I'm gonna try and whack this guy out of the sky. Nice. As the oracle foretold. Okay, let's see what their reply is. So again, worth remembering that I don't just have precognition, I also have the ability to heal on this unit. Um, but what I'm going to do first, uh, I'm going to move move this unit up like this so we will drop the heal so this unit can come up and whack the so I may wind up using uh, this unit as cleanup but let's see how the rest of the turn goes so this guy doesn't have any heals so at this point we get to finish off the flanker Enemy annihilated. and now we have our aspirant to run in and poke them with a pike not quite enough to finish the job So, at this point, I just kind of got to pick pick my battles. Now, there is an interesting question here. Um, I think given the fact that we have a threatening stack close to me, I am going to use Cleansing Light on my commander. Just as a precautionary measure. Uh, and basically, the way I'm going to handle this is I'll start with, um, I'll start with the Entropic Shock. Um, so, the Scryer is not going to be in uh, the pink of health. As the Oracle foretold. But more or less everything else is going to be in uh, in good shape. Okay, and 1044. So, Echo of Despair, potentially threatening. Um, 
Most of this stuff I'm not too worried about. And the Wild Bombardon is the wild card, so to speak. It's unclear how this could ha- Okay, we've already got that. Damister has an unexploited sector. I also think it's got a full queue. This is all the same. Ah. Okay, now I've got full paladins. Um, I don't believe there's anybody ready to upgrade in... Where are they? Oh, I do have them. Okay. So Operations available for priming. We'll do another up uh, elevate to protector. This is a ridiculously good way to uh, to earn some uh, some extra extra units. And Eluna just can't stop getting uh, just can't stop getting bonuses. So I think Oracle's protege is what I want here. Every level of reputation above neutral gain health and armor. Um, Deny the Wicked's not bad. Every unit in the hero's army has two damage deduction, reduction in all channels against attacks from units with soul burn. Um, so the more they attack us, the less damage they do overall. But uh, given the fact that she winds up kind of jumping into the middle of the fight and potentially taking a lot of damage, I do like the idea of giving her Oracle's Protégé. These guys are still going to sit in the capital until I'm Sector ready for them. Annexed. And I think that's it for this turn. So again, there's the possibility the Bombardon comes to attack us. That's a shame if they do. It's one of the reasons I'm not um, upgrading any of the... So in a perfect world, I would do... Oh, wait, I don't have those arcs anyway, so that's going to be next turn. Uh, again, I don't want to get the debuffs that come from upgrading my units on the same turn. But the first opportunity that I get, I am going to apply those uh, art collars. So let's see what... All right, my pet is not coming to uh, get me. Anessa has captured your claim sector. Anessa has captured Fragrant Plateau. Because of your, your claims on the sector, you've gained a Kaz's Belly on Anessa, allowing you to declare war on them with popular support. So I don't actually want to declare war on these folks, but it does give me, a, uh, it does give me something for negotiation later. Arc weapons allow us to disrupt the electrical signals naturally occurring in neural and mechanical control systems. What you see as drool and paralysis is really just the body running without any direct communication with the mind. Claudius Proton, assembly researcher. So arc retaliation defense is a pretty high priority to implement on my units. It's hard for me to say that ionic detachment has any place in my army at the moment. Uh, so the question would be, do I want to put some kind of um, combat manuscripts uh, on, or do I want to just add Watcher ranks? And I think at this point, Watcher ranks makes the most sense. Inner Fire is cool. It's a, you know, there's strategic operations. Oh, actually, this one looks like, no, yeah, they're all strategic. Um, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff on here, but at this point here, I really need to start uh, working on units. So we'll we'll go to the tier three Watcher units. Um, and before I go too crazy. pick up some goodies so I suppose if I'm drunk with power I can try and take delicate meadows uh, yeah we'll let them retreat it, there is the shame that I'm not getting the experience but being able to boost my reputation is better uh, Romeo Void thank you very much for the follow um, so yeah so the idea here would be you know I so one, uh, now that I get health and armor for having a better um, for having a better reputation, that's a big deal um, for my sort of my main hero. Um, it avoids me taking any damage. So it basically, like the whole reason I'm clearing out the growth here is because they can potentially be spawning units to come after my territory, and you know I'm building up all of my military infrastructure to make that less of a credible threat. Um, so yeah, it would be nice if I could get some experience so that I can start upgrading these units, but it's not the end of the world if I don't. <clears throat> um, what else? Actually, one thing I can do, because we don't have any immediate combat, I can go Arc Retaliation Defense, but I'm only going to mod this unit, I'm not going to mod everyone. Alright. It's 
I'll probably commit myself to the battle anyway, but I am curious to see what the AI does. Yeah, hell no. <laughs> Let's let's see if I can pull this. I've got I've had a really bad uh, I've really had a really bad run in terms of having to reset all of my uh, uh, all of my combat. And given the fact that this is a big AOE guy, uh, I would not be surprised if I make some stupid mistakes at the start. But like I said, it's a really good way to learn is to let the AI kick your ass. Um, one of the reasons I'm so resistant to losing units... Yeah, actually, this this could probably bear some experience, because I think if you look at a lot of the VODs, you'll see that I wind up... Like, I reset a lot when I use, lose units. And it's not to say... Like, if you want to do, like, multiplayer or something like that, that's not the best way to learn. Hey, Domi92Y, good evening. I'm here for stupid mistakes. All right, you you chose the... Sorry, it's Doomy, not Domi. Um, you chose the right place. <laughs> um... You know, the fact of the matter is, is that one of the reasons why I I, I do it this way is that um, I'm sort of, my, my, sorry to put it in these terms, my objective function's a little bit different than, let's say, what I'd be doing in multiplayer. So here's what I mean by that. Um, if, so let's consider two learning paths that I can take. Uh, one right now is me getting to play this uh, this faction for the very first time and you know you start off with the map with some advanced units which will take you a few turns to be able to build the technology to rebuild um, and then you get to sort of throw them against a lot of enemies there's a lot of growth on this map which means they're arc resistant which means they're actually rather good against your own units um, and let's say that over the course of my play uh, I said, okay, well, you know what? That's just how that's how it works. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to learn to to do without the units that I throw away recklessly. I'm gonna get really really good at fighting growth with like paladins and and maybe aspiring paladins, but I'm not gonna be very good at incorporating things like paladin lightbringers. Now, again. Depending on what I'm trying to learn, um, this can be like a good or a bad thing. Um, at some point, I'm going to have to learn to preserve my unit so that when I go into combat, I'll say, you know, I'm making a calculated risk about what will be taken off the battlefield and what I'm going to have to dedicate resources to rebuild. Um, but especially because I've very often been caught with abilities that maybe I don't fully understand, particularly against the, um, the mushroom people. Uh, in this case, I tend to find it a little bit more effective to say, okay, we tried an approach here, this resulted in me losing a unit, it's going to take me several turns to be able to rebuild this unit, after which I'm going to be facing, you know, much more stronger enemies, so on and so forth. And so uh, one of the ways that I've been approaching the game so far has been able to say, it's like, okay, I'm going to restart the combat from the beginning. I'm going to have to take my lumps that way, but I'm going to make sure that the, my armies stay somewhat intact so that I can kind of get the dynamics of these units a little bit better. Uh, and then obviously I think if I were to do something like play Empire mode, at that point I should feel confident enough in my abilities to say, you know what, that sucks I lost that unit, maybe I didn't anticipate what was going to come up, but now is the time for me to learn how to think on my feet. So um, that's just it. And again, it's like, it's like anything, right? I know sometimes there's a certain degree of bravado that comes up when you play, you know, strategy games. Lol, these games are for smart people. Um, but, you know... For me, I find this an effective way of learning. Um, your own experience may may vary. So anyways, um, there's a couple things that I need to check before I go uh, too deep on this attack. So we already know what the vine bud's gonna do. It does look like they have poison glands, but fortunately, I don't think... Well, you know what? These are suits of armor, so maybe they are gonna get poisoned. Uh, poison effects... Oh, hang on. These are melee attacks. So I have even less to worry about from these guys. Okay, cool. Um, I would actually probably hold back, save for the fact that they've got some pretty wicked artillery. Oh, actually, they don't. This is not your daddy's Bombardon. So I could technically just hold back, and they'd have to come to me. The question is, do I want to do that? 
You know what? Okay, here's how I'm going to handle this. This is stupid, but this will be educational. So this is based purely on the fact that it seems like they have no AoE attacks. Oh, sorry, I should have looked at the Echo of Despair. Uh, so, melee attack, bleak crescendo, right, okay, this thing blows up. And, yeah, okay. So, uh, again, given the fact that the Bomberdon actually needs to get into range to be able to, to, to you know, to drop its bombs, um, I'm willing to accept sort of the one round of it attacking and then we kind of run in to, to make up the difference. So we'll we'll see whether or not this actually pulls off, but this is a pretty this is a pretty tough shield wall I'm setting up here. Of course, they'll also be uh, sprouting their uh, uh, their vines. But what I really want to be able to do here is take out the Bomberdon with its uh, repeating attack. I think everything else will kind of fall into place. So that guy didn't put down vines. Unfortunately, that did run in the way. Hmm. Okay, they did a reasonably effective job of, of putting up a screen for the bomber dog. Question is, can I break it? Okay, so this guy really needs to be delivering... Um... Oh, it's actually their own... Uh, it's their own uh, precognition that got dropped. I'm just going to put them to safety for the time being. Can you not self-apply that? Okay, that sucks. I would not have done that move if I'd known that was the case. Uh, so yeah, this is the problem with this strategy, is that if they build a wall like this, it's actually kind of hard to penetrate, which means that the Bomberdon is still going to be able to deliver its pain. Um, so... This was, I think, as a whole, ill-considered, but let's see. Let's see if I can do anything interesting with it. You know, for this one, I think I'm just going to... I'll clear the way. Enemy annihilated. And what I'm going to do instead is uh, I'm going to maintain sort of the wall. I think they get a... Overwatch, yeah. But of course I had precog, so that's not the end of the world. So of course, there is the danger that I get entangled. And... I think for... Just so I can get this guy back into the fight. Yeah, so okay, this is not my ideal start, but let's see let's see what we can do with this. That's an interesting choice. As long as he survives. Oh, but the Bomberdon gets to fire, so they're probably going to take out the the hero mech. Nope, they're going after. That's so weird. Okay, so now you get to see some of the ridiculousness uh, of this of this approach. Um, I gotta think of the order in which I'm going to do this stuff. So this one gets taken out. Enemy eliminated. Um. Enemy eliminated. So I gotta do. Oh, uh, you know what? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna change this. So cleansing light on the hero, just because I'm gonna be able to 
And the thing is, I'm able to clear out all their other units, so there's no no point in me getting fancy on this one. What I was gonna do was As use the, the um, I was gonna use the embolden to oh. Not good. Okay, I'm in trouble here. As the Oracle foretold. Okay, there's really not a whole lot that I can do. There's not a whole lot I can do about the Overwatch. I'm just going to have to accept it and uh, move on. And then see if we can take this guy out from the side. As the Oracle so the problem control. here is that I've got a flank from the Vine Bud, and then I've got um, ranged attacks from the Bombardon. The good news is, is that I get my vehicle back um, if I lose it now. Yeah, they're going for her. They're going for her armor. Oh, they're going for her! <laughs> Paladins never die. Okay. Uh, well, that's the price I pay for questionable choices. We'll see whether or not that uh, that promise of that ability gets realized. So there is something of a question in terms of how much I want to commit to taking out the Bombardon. Uh, it's a tough call. I guess it's the, the official title is Volt Saber. So I've been calling them lances, but the, the name is Saber. So it would be a sword. And then if you look at the design, it's like, you know, it, it's it's more sword like, but it's a ridiculously big one. So and I, I believe the I think the design is quite intentional to look like a very lancish kind of uh, a very lancish kind of sword. So, uh, but yeah, the all indication here is that this is a Ofi officially a sword. Um, all right. So yeah, the question here is: Do I want to commit everything to taking this thing out, or do I want? Yeah, you know what? No, no need to get fancy. It'd be nice if I can, uh, if I can heal up. But oh, I can't target him. Okay. Well. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Our forces are victorious. Okay, so let's see if my... So my hero won't get their experience, but they should get their vehicle back at least. I confronted the embodiment of the toy from my dreams. Still, none of it seems to make sense. Why would you feel sad about losing something I never possessed? Do you? Not just your Celestian brothers and sisters have revoked their property. You mean the dream was a reflection of my paladin vow of humility? That it communicates my fear of giving up the few things I'm still allowed to possess. I always valued the third noble command for protecting me from the corruption of wealth. It might have been, but it could just as well be, uh, well allude to a different, bigger mystery within your mind. Rest now, Prentice Aluna. The truth is made for the patient. Objective completed. Oh, so I get to keep the Wild Bombardon. But... Okay, so this is weird, because the skill that I got... Oh, did I not get that one? Okay, sorry. I was under the impression that I had the skill that recharged my vehicle when I... I'm, so, I'm sorry to redo this, but um, I was under the impression I had the ability that recharged my vehicle. That was kind of the whole reason why I felt okay throwing her into the middle of the combat. I mean, this is going to be the last one of the night anyway, so I suppose we all get to see extra 
extra moves. Uh, what I am going to do, though, seeing as we already know that we've we've been able to successfully uh, get through this, um, I'm actually going to try a different approach here. Um, in this case, we're going to make the we're going to make the wall. Um, We're going to get, like, aggressive in terms of setting up the wall. This guy's sort of stuck, um, but we still get the advantage of the Oaths of Loyalty. So even though this guy's... He technically doesn't get to put up... Uh, he de technically doesn't get to, to be part of the, the wall officially, but... <laughs> um, he's covered by the defensive mechanisms. And... I'm genuinely split about how I want to handle this guy right now. Uh, I think I'm just going to keep him back. So we knew that was coming. Oh man, they really want that one. All right, he comes in to fill the hole. Operations available. Okay, so the big question here is, how do I want to try and, and punch a hole in this wall so that I can get to the Bombardon? Um, there's an argument that I take out this unit with the Volt Saber. I use uh, fire to take out this one, and then this guy comes in to hit the Wild Bombardon. If I do that, that means... Yeah, actually, this works pretty well. Uh, the only thing it doesn't give me is a hit on the... Hmm. Okay, so... Oh, that's right. He can't self-apply the... Damn. Okay. So, I unfortunately, I need to get rid of this unit. Enemy destroyed. Ah, but there is the chance that we... Well, one can hope. All right, so if I use my archer. Ah, perfect. Enemy down. So that kind of accomplishes a similar thing. Hmm. Yeah, so I guess the question is how much damage am I really will am I willing to take from the overwatches? Um, also, let's not stand on ceremony. I know I'm going to do a cleansing light on this unit, so I might as well just accept it. Uh, okay, so what am I... what am I scared of? Um, okay, this unit will slap the... This is such a waste of this unit, but... Ah, but I wound up, um... As the Oracle foretold. Oh, so it's possible that I wind up, uh... Rooted. So really, this is all about me getting the retaliation on the Bombardon if it tries any, uh, any funny business. I think the rest of this is kind of... Uh, uh, the rest of this is just kind of a... A cleanup job. I guess that's removed the retaliation from the Bombardon. Okay, and he can afford to take it now. All right, so now we get to see how silly this strategy can become. Um, I'm going to move this guy up. So this guy is going to do... Well... 
Oh, I think I made a boo boo. Alright. Oh no, he's still in range for the heroism. Okay. So, oh, I thought that was going to cure the. Um, damn, I really thought that was going to cure the entanglement. Alright, well. More heroism. Um. This is mostly just about uh, nullifying the overwatches. And then hopefully this takes out the Bombardon, but it may, they may still have a, uh, a sliver of health left. Yeah, they survived that. And no staggers, unfortunately. Okay, so I want to be a little careful about the order in which I do this. Um, so I'll take this unit out. Enemy killed. So now I'll do a heroism. That does trigger the Overwatch, but one more heroism, and we clean him up with the Entropic Shock. Our forces are victorious. So you know, by the end of that, in round two, basically it's full health. Uh, it's a full health um, stack with all of those heroes and use, uses. Uh, and again, I'll read this again because why not? I'm already going a half hour over. Uh, I've confronted the embodiment of the toy from my dream. Still, none of it makes any sense. Why, why would I feel sad about losing something I never possessed? Do you? Not just your Celestian brothers and sisters... Uh, sorry. Not just your Celestian brothers and sisters have revoked their property. You mean that the dream was a reflection of my paladin vow of humility? that it communicates my fear of giving up the thing, a few things I am still allowed to possess. I always valued the third noble command for protecting me from the corruption of wealth. It might have been, but it could just as well allude to a different, bigger mystery within your mind. Rest now, Prentice Eluna. The truth is made for the patient. Objective completed. Okay, if I was so inclined, I could try and uh, clean up some other baddies. Let's see what happens if I do an auto combat here. Production resources moved to Townsend Folly. We can use it to finish a food sector upgrade or a water sector. Let's do the water sector upgrade. Um, and I guess they're ready for new units. Let's get the Bombardon in there. So let's say we'll give them a Paladin and two... Um, I was speaking of. Yeah, so we'll give him an incorruptible. Hmm. I should probably bring him a, give him a light bringer too. Alright, that's gonna take a while. Yeah, you can stay put. Incoming communication. Hello, Aluna and Leoness. I've been glad to hear from you again. I admire your empire and foresee great prosperity from a continued flourishing friendship between us. So I don't think we're ready to do a defensive path. Oh, maybe we are. Uh, we can share a vision, sure. Your proposal is very welcome. We think alike. Improving our diplomatic state was the right thing to do. A new treaty was formed. Review treaties uh, on the list to the right. I thought I was already famous. Uh, okay. Production ready. Production's done. This should hopefully uh, boost up all of the infrastructure. Friendly with Dvar. And I think that is it. 
So let's talk about what the next few plans are going to be. We'll, um, I'll just kind of give the plan for the next week for those of you who weren't there at the start. It's kind of funny. Um, I, I, at least the report in terms of number of concurrent viewers has given me a number which is completely inconsistent with what I've seen inside of chat. So if this is a repetition for a lot of you, I apologize. I just don't, I don't seem to be getting accurate numbers in terms of uh, who's in here. So... Um, in terms of what I'm going to pursue, really, uh, the first thing I wanted to get done was to secure Damster and um, make sure that the growth weren't that credible of a threat. For the most part, that objective is now complete. It'd be nice if I can get the code word, code word intelligence complex, particularly because of what it will give me as far as uh, my boost to science. Um, we're two turns away from getting a level two uh, military infrastructure, so most of the stuff that they throw against us will probably be uh, will probably be pretty manageable. I'm going to be able to pick up some uh, production resources. I should be able to clear out these uh, you know these little um, these little growth nodes without too much trouble. Achoo! Excuse me. Um, yeah, actually, it looks like there's two free uh, production resources and then three stacks of, um, of growth, which, again, it seems like it's actually fairly rare for the growth to um, it seems like it's fairly rare for the growth to be uh, to be um, sort of uh, sending out units from those areas. But with that in mind, I don't want to get caught, especially if I have something like the code word intelligence complex. I don't want to suddenly find out that all of my armies are you know, in the north, and then, oh, hey, what do you know? You've got an overwhelming growth presence coming after you. It'd be nice to just have, you know, have a firm hand on uh, on on my, um, on my defense. So basically, these guys are going to be in the south for the time that it takes me to build up some uh, military infrastructure. Uh, in the meantime, I'll get them sort of clearing out the growth from sort of the most adjacent um, sectors. Uh, and then at that point, I can sort of consider where where I want to put this guy. Obviously, there's a bonus for me putting him inside his his demen, I guess. But uh, you know, the challenge with that is it means that I'm basically sitting on a plague lord for no reason. I'm not entirely convinced that that's that's the way I want to play it. Uh, oh, there is one thing I should be doing here, and that's uh, upgrading my as many units as I can to incorruptible. Um, so I don't think that's going to cover my whole army, um, but these guys also aren't weak to arc, so I think I can live, yeah, I think I can live with a couple of these guys not, uh, not getting their arc defense. Um, okay, so that's that's taken care of. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's sort of the south uh, taken care of. So in the next um, in the next uh, kind of next few turns, we're gonna pick up stashes, clear out growth, um, clear out growth, pick up stashes. We've completed all of the missions, as far as I can tell, uh, related to Damister. So really the next step is to head up to Truchet, which I suspect will probably wind up having the same set of problems. Now, in between that, I think it is less likely that Truchet is going to naturally grow to have a border that's adjacent to Townsend Folly. That leads me to think that maybe it would not be a terrible idea for me to consider building a settlement. Um, a couple of good candidates for settlement areas would be in the Upheavals. Uh, that's because I can expand my borders to include this Cosmite, this food. Uh, I could actually also expand to include the production. And then again, I have another food. This is a particularly desirable one because of the science and, and food. Although again, I am going a little food crazy as far as the, uh, as far as the empire is concerned. Like I, I already have a lot of these, these growth uh, tiles. Although I think that is just the nature of the planet as well. The other thing that would be interesting about where I place the colony is, is that it puts some of the pressure off of removing my aquatic expansion uh, in favor of the organic food compound and sensual garden robot reserve. If I were to build, say, a colony maybe here, so then we would say, okay, so one, two, three. Oh, hang on. It has to be within two. So I'd have to build one here. So then I could go one, two, 
three, four, and then the fourth one for Townsend Folly is the organic food compound. That's a weird way to do the borders, but it's not, um, it's not completely out of the question. So let's say I built my colony. So let's say we built the colony here. I could go one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four. I just feel like that puts a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that I wind up leaving on the table. So I could do, yeah, I can see exactly why they did the borders the way that they did. If if one of these borders just wound up being slightly closer, that, that would be like a perfect place for a colony because you'd basically get Cosmite production, energy, and uh, like Central Garden Robot Reserve in in one one go. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But I, I get the feeling that I'm going to need to build at least one colony to connect. Okay. So you don't actually have to have all of your territories um, sort of combined. It is helpful, however, because there can be some advantages in terms of moving quickly through your own territory, which is what I want to try and capture. Um, so yeah, we'll move up to Truchet. We'll complete the tasks that we're given there. If it just so happens that I feel that I'm in a position of strength as far as my units are concerned, uh, I might take a reserve and move them up to uh, Norzadal. But again, I don't want to stretch myself too thin because it has seemed like the last couple of times I've uh, I've moved out to quest objectives, they tend to be hiding some fairly fairly substantial opposition. So I it's I don't necessarily mind being methodical in approaching this. Uh, the good news is, is that the enemy seems to largely be the planet, and so I'm able to. Uh, I'm sort of able to take things on my own, uh, my own pace, it feels like. Plus, we're already halfway uh, to the reputation that we need. Um, as far as the rest of the week is concerned, so I can actually take a minute here, seeing as we're at the end of the stream, I can bring up uh, Chrome again. I only use Chrome for Twitch. Uh, I actually, so oddly enough, it looks like Chrome has been the guilty, uh, the guilty program for taking up all of my... Um, taking up all of my uh, my system resources. I wasn't expecting that, but um, I prefer Safari, but <laughs> I can't always be on a Mac, sadly. So, uh, But yeah, I am going to take a quick minute here and see uh, who is online. Um, but more importantly, it's also going to tell me how my video is concerned. Sorry to be stumbling all over myself at the end here. I know the dismount kind of counts. Um, cool. Okay. So yes, uh, for those of you, okay. So some of you are new to the channel. For those of you who are looking to see more of my stuff, if you happen to like the Elder Scrolls, this is totally unrelated to strategy. So I'm definitely doing more Age of Wonders Planetfall on, uh, next, next week. Uh, we'll be continuing this campaign. Uh, tomorrow there's a pre-recorded video for Morrowind. Now, if you prefer watching my stuff on YouTube, the high-quality version of that video is on YouTube. Sometimes I make a, a mistake in the encoding and the quality isn't quite as good as it could be. But generally, I try to record those at uh, 1440 horizontal lines, 60 frames a second. Um, it is the first time I've been playing the Elder Scrolls games because the first time I tried uh, uh, Skyrim, I bounced off of it. But I played uh, Arena, and I actually quite liked Arena. Uh, I played Daggerfall, and I liked the ambition of Daggerfall, although in practice the game it was hit or miss uh, for me on, on some cases. Uh, and I'm currently going through Morrowind, and I'm actually finally understanding like why Morrowind has the reputation it does. I've been really enjoying the experience. Uh, and again, for those of you who, uh, who haven't come into the channel before, there is a Dunmer voice during the broadcast. Uh, so uh, that will be three hours of, of that nonsense if you're so inclined. That'll be at 7 o'clock. It's a pre-recorded video, so I won't be able to interact with you in voice. But I will, uh, I will be, I'm usually in chat um, talking with people uh, while, while that video goes on. Uh, for those of you who prefer my live stuff, I do highly recommend stopping by on Wednesday and Friday because I'm going to be playing more Phantom Brigade by uh, by Brace Yourself Games. They gave me a press key for that. It is incredible. Uh, I, I, I knew it was going to be a game that was up my alley. I had no idea it was going to be as good as it was. Um, so I'm going to be dividing my attention for the Wednesday and Friday casts between um, Phantom Brigade and Industries of Titan. 
and I feel like Phantom Brigade, because it's the, the new toy, right? I'm probably going to be spending some more time on that, but uh, there's basically a lot of strategy, a lot of simulation coming up. Totally not Valken says, I'm new here. Hope this place is full of nice people and not a caster that turns into a troll when he stops streaming. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, Valken. It's, it's been forever since I've been in, uh, in Octavian's chat for you to see that. <laughs> Uh, bless you for stopping by. I'm sorry if I'm just wrapping up at the time that you're you're coming in. Anyways, guys, I I, I love sharing these games with you, um, and I hope uh, I really hope uh, some of that at least speaks to you. I, I I really hope you get a chance to see Phantom Brigade because I think that is a really special game. Um, if, if, you know, I I like Planetfall, um, but I was so impressed by uh, I, I was really so impressed by Phantom Brigade when I played it. Um, but uh, I guess the time has come for me to pick who I'm going to host. And there's a few people online who I think are are wonderful uh, broadcasters. But we did see Night Valian inside the chat a little bit earlier. Uh, and he is playing um, SteamWorld Quest. Is that the same as SteamWorld Dig? I don't know. Anyways, uh, Night Valian's a, a really nice guy. And uh, as, as Valken says, uh, it's full of nice people and not trolls like me. So um, I'd love it if you guys would stick around and uh, show Night Valian a good time. Uh, he is definitely a streamer who, in my opinion, is, is very much worth watching. Very relaxed. Somebody who I think um, really brings a lot to... Uh, I don't know. Like I, Some people say they like having me on as like background noise as, as stuff goes by. Um, and I think Night Valian is very good for that as well. It's very soothing. It's very, um, it's very, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's a good person, I think. Um, it's been a lot of fun to watch him. So, uh, and wow, there's so many of you. It's like three times as many people as what's being said on my concurrent viewers right now. <laughs> so thank you all of you for hanging out and watching. Um, obviously, I didn't get to acknowledge most of you because my streaming program was lying to me. But uh, I am really making a meal out of this farewell. I hope I get a chance to see some of you either tomorrow or uh, Wednesday or Friday for Phantom Brigade or Morrowind, depending on what your tastes are. Treat Night Valian well. Uh, for those of you who are new to Planetfall, I hope you enjoy Planetfall. And for the rest of you, um, we'll see you next time.